Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Z Gunslinger. Tonight, I will be joined here by Psychaotic and Muted Handling Cams and Production. Tonight, we have the Chattanooga Barracudas versus the Columbus Fire. And I am totally excited to see this. In Nepa fashion, and Juicefur has already pointed out in chat, let's go ahead and hop into these rules over here. We're looking at eight minute quarters. You get a five minute halftime. One minute timeout per team and you're, during the half. Fifth player is allowed in the spawn arena. Overtime is your golden goal. And no toxic or discriminatory behavior here allowed at Nepa. And psych? What, yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm bringing it. Sorry, guys. I am, uh, joined here with me, like I said, is Psychaotic. Psychaotic, how are you doing tonight? I am doing okay. You know what? Yeah, you. There we go. Your name tag's fixed. You, you said you just earlier. Gave me a giggle. But uh, yeah, no, I'm doing. I'm doing real good. I'm super excited to get into this game. As you said, between Chattanooga Barracudas and Columbus Fire, it does look like form. And I don't know if it, you know if it's just for now. If they're working on getting somebody, but uh, Columbus Fire, uh, me, it is going to be four. Okay, they are only going to roll with a roster of four this evening and no sit sub. So if anybody drops out of the arena they could be looking at a 3v4 situation which is always very very risky but hopefully they don't have to uh it doesn't come to that uh over on the side of chattanooga we've got solar p vacant glass harper and big floppa and over on the side of columbus fire it's rev link one one and only and it's yolo man these are some solid solid rosters i mean Zika, uh, gunslinger looking at chattanooga what do you see what are you expecting out of this roster tonight so a lot of, like, I'm a lot of, familiar with a lot of these players, Solar P, Vacant, Glass, Harper, and Big Floppa. You know, Big Floppa I saw last week uh, during the cast I casted um, on. So I'm excited to see him, you know, again play here tonight. Not sure if he's going to be hopping in, but if we do see Big Floppa, I expect that to be a deadly threat. Glass, Vacant, you know, both players I know and, you know, extremely, extremely uh, deadly players, offense and defensive wise. Solar P as well. So Harper, I'm not sure just as much about, um, but I do know a little bit about Harper and he is pretty good on offense, so. Yep, he absolutely is. I mean, all of these players could prove to be threats tonight in the arena and Glass, that's my girl right there. I gotta shout her out. Um, and I'm super excited to see what all of these players do this evening, but then, Looking over on the side of Columbus Fire. I mean, these are some heavy hitters this evening and joined by one and only uh, as their PDR sub. Like I said earlier, an unfortunate situation to be in with, a, you know, with, with only four players, but they've got enough to field the team and that's all they're looking at right now. So, uh, you know, Z, what are we, what are we, what are you expecting here from Columbus? Uh, Columbus, you know, I, I definitely have played with a lot of these players, uh, Yellow and Rev especially, Rev being an ex-teammate of mine. Yeah, Rev is definitely deadly on offense, but is known to be deadly, just as deadly on defense as well. Yellow, extremely well overall, just player, you know, all-around player. One and only very, very, very strong offensive player that I, I've seen from him. Uh, when I have seen him, again, not too much known about him from me, but I have seen a couple of his couple of his uh, his plays and performances and they've been strong on offense and link one link one is just it's link one i mean been playing for so long and he's you see him all around the field so again uh, all around these players are just everywhere on the field uh so i expect beautiful performance from these both both of these teams and uh yeah i'm excited to see see these teams perform yeah, 100%. I mean, I could not agree with you more there. Link won an OG in this game, you know, all over the arena this evening. Also, Rev. I mean, Rev was my teammate in the last uh, in the last NEPA series um, on the, the Cubs. So it is. I'm super excited to be able to, to cast him tonight as well. And of course, also, it's Yolo Men. Uh, been around for a while. Uh, one and only the PDR sub getting an opportunity to show what he's got this evening. I'm so excited to see what we see out of Columbus Fire this evening. Indeed, and as we as we have some time here, uh, eggs, you guys love them, I love them, but we're not talking about the ones you eat, guys. Every commercial that will be broadcasted during the AAA and the Pro Series will have NEPA-themed Easter eggs. Some are obvious ones, and some are really hidden. Everyone who can name the commercials uh, will be entered in to win a $250 gift basket, plus $100 cash, and more. To answer, you are going to have to watch the matches, write down the Easter eggs and the commercial, 
and save them for when we open the competition. We love the Easter eggs here, Psyka. Fan of eggs. Eggs are quite good. <laughs> they are, they are, they are. You know, I eat them almost every morning, and... Might be too many eggs, but, you know, we're not gonna talk about it. Oh, man. <laughs> it's all good, it's all good. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm hoping we get into this match momentarily. We do have one ready up, and it looks like maybe that was also the second... Yes, here we go into round one here between Chattanooga, Barracudas, and Columbus Fire. The disc is in the middle. The stacks are in the tube. The counter winding down right now. We are ready to get into this game to kick off a night of AAA matches. And away we go into round one. The first touch is going to go to Chattanooga. Beautiful headbutt coming through all the way down into the Columbus zone. It's recovered here by Solar. Solar looking at that three. She's not quite able to make the angle work. Instead, it is slapped out of the bubble. Slapped through mid. That is drifting all the way back there. Where are the stacks? Looks like it's going to be Harper all by himself getting home. And barely gets that clear off before getting stunned out. It does not quite find its way through the mid, though. Instead, it'll be recovered by one and only. I'm sorry, that is Link. I cannot read. Link sends this one back with a quick reset to its YOLO man. YOLO taking this one to the double diamonds before sending it back over to Link 1. Link now at the pack, drawing out this pressure here from Vacant and waits a little too long as Vacant does get the headbutt, gets the quick reset off back to Harper. Harper now finding that open lane through the cross side too, but oh my goodness, look at that. Columbus already home to, no, not recover this one, at least not as first. A little bit of a misread there leads to Link 1 being there first, but he is there, sending this now over to one and only who feeds it through the tunnel where it is Solar P on the scene, ready to pick this one up and walk it back through the tunnel, sending this one up a little too high for the pass so instead it will be picked off by rev rev sending this one through the middle stack race coming through it's a uh, yolo man there first just outside the bubble they've got the numbers works it forward but oh gets shut down by solar p and rev not able to make that shot work either bouncing off the ding ring toward the mid where it's going to bounce into the hands of oh i did not see the player but they get the pass over to one and only one and only looking to do some moves but glass tells him no not today gets the stun and solar p gets the pickup but not quite the clear just yet instead it will be sent back where it came from bouncing around in the trench recovered now by its yolo man Yolo on the back line, slowing this one down. Very, 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 very smart here. Uh, you know, Columbus looking to push a lot, and now forced to slow this one down, actually get set up, get their bearings, take a deep breath. Uh, so now it is going to be Yolo Man on the floor in the trap area, looking around, looking for something, finds that cross over to Link, Link over to Rev, and Rev to the goal. There we go, Columbus on the board first. Columbus coming in hot here. Had a couple mispossessions there. The defense of the Barracuda is definitely playing strong there, but just not able to keep them pointless here. That is going to be a two-point lead here for the Columbus Fire. Yep, two points on the board, but that is all. And we are almost three minutes into this first round, but oh, it's YOLO, man, looking to fix that as he gets the interception off the offensive joust. Sends this one high cross, looking for a teammate, but a little bit of a miscommunication there means it'll be picked off by Solar P instead. Solar stunned out, stolen away by Rev. Rev just sending this one high cross, looking for Link over there, but not quite going to find him just yet. He does get there off the bounce. A beautiful recovery there, but no shot for him going off the head there of a defender where it will be recovered by one and only just outside the bubble sends this one cross to Yolo Man driving in off the nest and he will not be denied for that two-pointer. Yeah, another quick two points there from the side of the fire. Not hesitating that time. Only taking a 34-second goal time as to oppose to that three minutes we almost saw there uh, in that first possession. The defense of the Barracuda is still playing strong here. Just need to find their clears and they may have something going here for them. Yep. They may, as we are now approaching four minutes remaining. This offensive joust is looking good for the Barracudas. Solar firing this one over to Harper, who hits the quick reset back to Vacant. Vacant now up high, cross to Glass on the ceiling. Glass looking for that bubble cut, but no good. Instead, bouncing into the hands of, ooh, one and only, who gets there off the stun from Vacant. Sends this one all the way through, but the stack for Chattanooga is already back. It's Harper in the area, picking this one up, sending it to the ceiling, and then sending it through the tunnel, where we'll bounce 
bounce right into the hands of one and only doing some beautiful moves to keep it away from the incoming stack and sends it back through the mid bouncing above shoulder back into the hands of one and only my goodness but it's vacant shutting him down with a beautiful steal but not quite a clear not just yet bouncing off the pyramid into the hands of its yolo man yolo sends this one cross over to one and only and what a pocket shot there from only that is another two points for columbus Another two points indeed, and beautiful, beautiful defense on the side of Columbus that time. Was able to get the stop and get the clear out. And though it took him a little bit of time again, was able to find another two points. The Barracudas here just not able to find their, their grounding yet, but there's still plenty of time to go as these teams roll out on this offensive joust. Yep, a little bit scuffed on that rollout, but Harper does get back to it in the trap. Working this one forward, looking for something, finds a good cross over to Solar P, under immediate pressure there from one and only, finds the pass over to Glass. Glass taking this one to the floor, doing some moves, but cannot keep it away from one and only, who gets a beautiful steal, a good send through, bouncing in toward the bubble area. It's Rev on the scene, an open three, and yes, ooh, seven meter two just inside the bubble, but hey, points are points. Points are points indeed, and again, that, that defense from the side of Columbus Fire just not letting anything come through their side. And the Barracudas here may need to rethink their strategy, maybe maybe go for some more resets. Have not seen a lot of that from them when they are on offense here. Yep, absolutely. The defense from Fire has just been, well, Fire. <laughs> As a Vacant sends that one all the way through up to Solar P under a little bit of pressure here, but now making some space for himself before sending it back to Glass in the tunnel. Glass under immediate pressure, sends it back to Solar, who fires this one low cross to Harper on the boot. Harper driving in, but oh my goodness, what a save there from Rev, but the work is not done because here come the Barracudas once again. No, one and only a beautiful uh, steal there, but Vacant does get back to it, just whipping it into the bubble and instead bounces into the hands of Solar P. Solar now sends this one low. It is Harper on the backboard and beautiful work from them to get their first two. Yeah, Barracuda there now. The Barracuda's there finding their first two points of this first quarter here with two minutes to go. Something that I saw them do that time and I pointed it out, they did back it out and were able to slow those passes down, allowing those defenders to be drawn out and gave the, gave the chance for them to score there. Yep, 100%, and ooh, maybe, maybe Glass now going for this ceiling shot right into the hands of Solar P, who helps it along for the three. My goodness, what was an eight-point lead seconds ago is now just three. Ladies and gentlemen, that shows you how quick this game can change. This is Echo, and it is, you cannot get, you cannot get, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Oh, man, uh... Uh, you know, oh yeah, you cannot get comfortable here. You I'm gotta sorry. always be playing on your team. <laughs> you know, toes. Uh, gosh, oh man. Yeah, you always gotta be playing on your toes when you play this game. And uh, Yolo's now is gonna be playing on his toes. He sits low. Yep, low now to one and only on the floor, drawing out this pressure here from Glass before sending it cross. Oh no, a little bit off on that grab, but it's okay. It bounces back into the hands of Link One on the back line, and it looks like Columbus is looking to set up once again. Link hitting this reset back to one and only, one and only driving forward, incoming pressure. He's got to get rid of it and he does, sends it to Link. Link doing some moves off the post. Oh my goodness, that defender was lost as he puts in the two. Again, another two points there from the fire, but we're able to be, uh, you know, maybe, maybe extinguish a little bit as the Barracudas now have a five point lead to overcome here. Still plenty of time, still three quarters to go after this first quarter. So we shall see as they roll out here. Vake is going to send it right over, but intercepted there quickly by one and only. Oh, oh my, my God. My goodness. It is not just an interception. It is a 35 meter half court to end out this round. Beautiful, beautiful stuff there from Columbus. Beautiful stuff indeed, and as this round comes to a close, we are going to take a quick commercial break. Ladies and gentlemen, stay with us. Stay here for the action. We will be right back.
and we are back, ladies and gentlemen, rolling into the second quarter. Psychotic, what are you seeing so far from these teams as we uh, came to that close, close of the quarter one? You know, I got... Jucifer earlier in chat said that Chattanooga seems like they're missing Billy Brickwall. And I, you know what, I can't tell you exactly what it is. Maybe it's that, maybe it's not. But uh, they're missing some of that offensive chemistry that, 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 you know, that they need to have to go against a team like Columbus. They're just, they're sh once they get into the zone of Columbus, they're struggling to make it all the way into the bubble. That said, once they do, they're finding some good success. Indeed they are, and I will have to agree with you there. The defense for the uh, Bar Barracudas there doing an amazing job, but just not able to capitalize on offense as these teams roll out. That's going to be picked up there by the Barracudas. Since how quickly, and trying to find something here quickly, is Glass. Glass now sending it up high to Harper. Our right, Vacant, sorry. Vacant sitting over to Solar P, and Solar P getting the quick two points there. Great, great stuff there from Chattanooga. You know, I was very worried at the end of that last round, one and only hit that, or I'm sorry, yeah, at the end of the last quarter, one and only hit that beautiful half court, and I was very worried about what that might do to the momentum, to the mental. But look, they're coming out strong here in this quarter, and uh, they want to come back. And maybe it starts here as this offensive joust is underway. One and only sends this one cross to Link 1 in the tunnel. Stack is getting get together here for Chattanooga, but Rev does get the pass back to Link 1. Link now crossing back over to one and only. One and only just outside the bubble does not like what he sees, so he'll turn this one around back to its YOLO man on the back line. YOLO now up high into the hands of Rev, doing some moves, trying to find some space, but not quite able to make that pass work. However, it's YOLO man taking a shot, but oh my goodness, Solar P! <laughs> Oh my god! He's going on right now! Barracudas want this one! They are not letting Columbus score here as YOLO now sends this one up to Rev. Rev again gets shut down by the goalie. My goodness! And finally, it is out of the bubble, but not clear just yet. Bouncing off that trap block there into the hands of YOLO, looking for the quick pass over. It does connect. Now in the hands of Rev. Rev driving in, and you know what? You gotta set out the goalie, apparently, if you're gonna score on the Barracudas right now. <laughs> You are going to have to. Solar P being a wall there in, in goal and not letting anything pass. Having to get stunned out there for the fire to even have a chance of getting those two points. Putting on two more points there, though, is the fire now up by eight points. Yep by eight, but not over yet. Six minutes remaining left in this quarter. It's gonna be Solar P handling this one in the trap. Solar doing some moves, trying to bait out some defenders and uh, does look like he's gonna get one and only to bite before sending it back to Vacant. Vacant back over cross to Solar on the floor, sending this one forward to Glass. She's driving in off the shield, but gets shut down by its YOLO man. What a grab as he sends this one through the tunnel, bouncing all the way down into the zone of the Barracudas. It's Rev all by himself to put in the two. Two more there. Now it's in point lead for the fire. And again, that defense for the Columbus fire there, just, just looking impenetrable right now. Only finding themselves two points here is the Barracuda in the second quarter so far, but not saying that there isn't plenty of time to go as these teams roll out. The Barracudas here are going to try to find something to get going. Yep, and they've got to find something to get going. We saw, you know, a little bit of breath of life from them earlier in the previous quarter, but uh, they've got to get it back now as Columbus is fully in control, forcing yet another turnover. Rev sending this one all the way down into the bubble of Chattanooga. It looks like, no, that stack is going to overshoot it. Rev there first, doing it on both ends of the arena, moving around on the pack, sending this one low cross over to Link 1. Link now under some pressure from the incoming stack, gets the pass into bubble up to one and only one and only driving in will not be denied for another two here for fire. Yeah, another two points there. And if this if this Barracuda team wants to find something going, they've got to find something that works for them on offense again. Maybe taking those long resets as, as opposed to those long passes, it might be might be more beneficial to them to do that on the side of their offense. Yep, absolutely. Uh, but here they come once again with this offensive joust. It's Harper looking to send this one up to Glass. Glass under some pressure hits the quick reset back to Vacant, who feeds it forward now into the hands of Solar P. Solar under some pressure, looking to hit Harper in motion. Oh no, just a little bit off. Instead, bouncing up high into the hands of one and only, who sends this one through tries to send this one through the mid, ends up taking a very wacky bounce back into the hands of no way. Harper, was that behind the back no look? That was indeed psychotic and beautiful, beautiful there. Beautiful, beautiful shot there from Harper. That's definitely what they need to get going here in the second quarter. 
I mean, yeah, that's, you know, <laughs> you've got to be dancing after that one. Beautiful shot there as they cut the lead down to just nine. Yolo Man now sending this one forward to one and only. Gets through one defender, looks back, <laughs> looking for the incoming pressure before sending it low cross uh, into the hands of Rev. But no, that pass just a little bit off. Instead, it's one and only on the wall, looking to get this one through off the post. This little self-pass action going on right there, uh, but no, will not quite work. Instead, it's going to be recovered now by Harper, sending this one all the way through off the back wall into the hands of... Ooh! That is why you can't do that! Just take the shot! <laughs> but hey, you know what? It happens. It happens. As uh, Columbus is looking to get this one out of their zone, but not yet. As Harper looking oh. for a repeat performance there, not able to find the goal. Yolo Man sending this one all the way down into the bubble off the back wall out of the bubble before anybody gets there glass in the area first and she'll send this one into the hands of one and only in the mid only slowing this one down before sending it across to yolo man and yolo just backing this one up there baiting out that defense before sending it up high to link one in the ceiling Link now stopping at the cloud for just a moment, surveying some options under some pressure here and gets punished there for hesitating. Harper with a beautiful steal there, sending this one all the way through. It's a high mid, it's gonna bounce down. Oh no, a little bit of a misread going on, but Yolo Man is the one there first. Yolo now walking this one forward, pre-stacked with Rev. Looking like a good dribble attempt maybe, but no, just a little bit off. But oh my goodness, one and only, what a steal there to secure the two. Yeah, and a lot of back and forth there as we see a 1 minute 30 second goal time. Definitely, definitely seeing more momentum there, though, for the side of the Barracudas. After that three from Harper, definitely maybe a, a tide shift here and still plenty of time in the second quarter to get going here. Maybe, maybe a bit. As a Harper now sends this one all the way up to Glass. Glass looking for this low cross, but oh no, it's going to take a bounce off that spot on the trench, and the clear will not quite get as far through as they may have wanted but maybe oh no not quite there for Rev as he takes a shot bouncing off the shield back into his own hands before he hits this reset to one and only one and only now down low cross to YOLO man YOLO driving in but Solar P tells him no oh my goodness the double save there coming through from the Barracudas to keep it out of the goal but this reset will be good to one and only on the back line only paused at the station drawing out pressure from vacant before sending it up high cross to YOLO YOLO now forward into the hands of Rev, who gets shut down by Solar once again. Man, Solar is on fire right now. Uh, and it'll be Glass now, sending this one all the way through the mid, bouncing into the bubble of the fire. We're going to see a stack race. It is Solar P there first, and my goodness, Solar gets it done on both sides of the arena. Solar definitely getting it done on both sides, and not a, not not afraid to uh, not afraid to play bold there in the, in the side of well themselves in the goal you know playing a big big defensive performance tonight and then making those uh making those was a three point psyche i missed it i think it was two it was just barely inside the bubble very very close though and you know what honestly at this point points are, at this point points are just points and uh, ooh, columbus fire barely barely missing some more yolo man now sending this one forward to rev on the shoulder rev looking to fire this one cross over to one and only it is going to be a little bit off but he does get there off the bounce only now driving in, drawing out some pressure from Harper before sending it over across to YOLO. YOLO on the post, looking to do it himself, but Solar says, get that out of my house. And maybe one final shot from one and only no, will not go in. And uh, quarter two, now over. And that's going to be the conclusion as we go into our halftime show here. It is going to be a nine-point lead for the Columbus Fire. Folks, stay tuned. We have more NEPA action coming toward to you here. Just a second.
For those looking to claim this week's NFT, head over to www.nepavrpro.com slash NFT to fill out the NFT claim for form sorry in order to complete the claim form you will need the secret password which this week's is get ready pro series the deadline to submit the claim form is 9 p.m eastern on sunday september 11th and folks we are back here and now in our halftime break as these teams are just trying to stay warm solar p Psycho, I want to talk about her a second. It, Solar P playing a crazy game tonight. I muted? Oh, I don't think I was muted. I think I was just in so much shock. You know what? It's fine. Anyway, Solar P, man, has been absolutely killing it tonight. But you know what? He's not just killing it tonight. I, you know, I'm going to go to bat for Solar P right now. If you do not know his name, if you do not know what kind of numbers he puts up consistently in these games and in and around the community, uh, you are you are missing out. Solar P is a goalie to watch here in this league because he's currently sitting at what six saves, and those are those, you know those are the numbers we're used to seeing from him. He's just he's just killing it tonight. I cannot say enough. And, you know, somebody that's played goalie myself, I am absolutely drooling over this performance. This is a dream performance right here for me. So, Solar, you're <laughs> absolutely killing it tonight in goal. Uh, but not only that, I mean, everybody on the side of the Chattanooga Barracudas are playing pretty deadly. Uh, Vacant with one assist, one save, and one steal over there. Glass with one assist and one steal. Harper with one save and two steals and five points. Sorry. And on the side of the fire, Psycho, what are the stats over there? I mean, the name of the game over there is assists. Link one sitting at three assists, one and only with three of them. It's Yolo Man with one of them and Rev none. However, he has put up eight points on his own, which is more than anybody else on the side of the Barracudas and only one less than uh, their own top scorer, which is one and only right now at nine. Uh, you know, noticeably less saves on the side of, uh, of, of Columbus Fire, but honestly, that makes sense because as we were talking about earlier, uh, Chattanooga's had a little bit of trouble pushing into the bubble of fire. Indeed, they have, and that 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 uh, that Chattanooga team definitely, you know, struggling here on offense, but defense definitely not. The fire here just able to find those those stacks, those clears, and pickups on the side of the Barracuda. Solar P trying to do his best, but unfortunately, you can only do so much before a goalie stun comes in, or you just happen to miss a disc. Something that I'm going to want to see from the Barracudas here coming into this second half is definitely going to be uh, that 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 passing that I was talking about there in that in that first half. Uh, definitely a little bit of bold passes there from from Barracudas and we're not paying off at all. So some more communication, some more resets and slow it down and we might have ourselves a different tide here in the second half as these teams are going to be coming out here shortly. It's like any words. You know what? I think you're spot on there with, with resets. We're seeing the Barracudas push a lot of bad numbers in the bubble, which means, you know, the, the defense is home for the fire, and whether it be a 2v3 or, you know, whatever the, whatever the number combination is, they've got less people that they're taking into the bubble with them than Columbus has defenders in the bubble. And to, to alleviate that, reset more. And it's super easy for me to sit here in this caster chair and be like, well, just do this, I promise. And it's, I know it's not easy, especially when you've got uh, one and only in YOLO man running in the midfield right now putting pressure on the stall pass that is trying to create some time for the you know the team members to get down the arena but that that really is the core of it because they're pushing bad numbers and they've got to figure out a way to turn that around going into the second half which starts oh my goodness right here right now this very second away we go this one first touch gonna go to glass for the side of the barracudas she's gonna send this one forward looking for solar p solar p with the relay up to harper and oh harper with an 18 meter second shot finds the first two points of this quarter. Beautiful quick two points there. Only a 10 second goal time coming from the side of Barracudas. Seeing those passes again, you know, a little bit of a bold pass, but luckily we're able to pay off for them this time as Harper's gonna try to close that gap now. Only down here by seven points. Yep, only down by seven and plenty of time left on the clock. This one's gonna go to one and only, oh no, loses a hand on it and Harper is quick to steal it away, looking for a bold ceiling shot, but it's Yolo Man in the area to shut that down. He'll send this one up to Rev who relays it forward through the mid. Oh, has a cherry picker down there, but the pass gonna take a bad bounce and it gives Glass the opportunity to get there first, but not quite get the clear as that bounces off the lip of tunnel back into the zone of the Barracudas. 
This time she goes for the pass up to Harper, just outside the tunnel, doing some moves to open up the lane, sends this one all the way in. Oh my goodness, so, so close, but that is what your teammates are there for as Solar flying into the scene gets there for the two. Beautiful shot attempt there from Harper. Unfortunately, just a little high. Solar P definitely making the smart move there off the rebound to take it in for the two points instead of backing it out for the three as that defense for the fire was there and may have gotten that stop off. As the fire roll out here, that's going to be Yolo Man handling it. Yep, YOLO handling this one on the nest, doing some moves to keep it away from the incoming pressure, and oh my goodness, what a pass to Link1, who takes a bold shot on Solar P. Uh, Solar P gets it out of the bubble, but not cleared away just yet. That one's going to be Harper sending this one all the way through the tunnel, bouncing up high now into the hands of Rev. Pre-stacked with YOLO, man, but that stack is stunned out. We're going to see a race here is, oh, Link1 breaking away. Oh, that's a one and only. I cannot read. One and only breaking away from the pack to get there first, doing some moves on the shoulder looking for something anything or maybe he'll just do it himself oh my goodness getting through those defenders to secure the two-pointer and then only saying i am the only one that's gonna get this goal right here as he walked it in on that defense i want to say that was almost was that a 2v1 there or maybe 3v1 situation for one and only no matter what the situation beautiful beautiful solo take there from one and only Yep. Great work is another read there from Fire. My goodness. I think that was, I don't know who that was that forced the bad pass, but it's YOLO man was quick to capitalize with the three. Yeah, YOLO there, quick to capitalize indeed, and not hesitating to put those points back up that they, that, that the uh, Chattanooga Barracudas were able to gain back there early this uh, third quarter, sorry. So. Yep. So here we go. This one's going to be Glass sending this one over across to Solar. Solar under a little bit of pressure there, just forced to take the shot, and it does not quite work out. Now returning back into the zone of the Barracudas, where one and only is on the scene for another two. My goodness, how many points is he up to? One and only now up to 13 points to his name. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful performance here from one and only tonight. Definitely putting the offense on the on the on the that on this on his shoulder. Sorry, <laughs> I need to wake up. Hey man, it's coffee. all good. <laughs> we <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got two more games. Go get your coffee and settle in because Solar P. Oh my goodness, Glass hitting him in stride with a beautiful pass, and Solar P turns that around for another two points. You know, very back and forth, but they're keeping it to within this nine ten point lead. Yeah, we've been seeing that all game here. No, no really clear like pull away from that nine to ten point lead mark. If the Barracudas can just get something going for themselves, maybe a little bit of momentum tied here, they may be able to find themselves back here in a range to take this game. Whoa! A beautiful save there from Vacant, reading it off the backboard, but not out yet as Link1 looking to do it again. No, that one will not go in either. This one's picked up by one and only just outside the bubble. Down low to Rev. Rev with the quick pass back to its YOLO man. Doing some moves, but shut down by Vacant once again. Oh my goodness. Doing his best Solar P impression. Trying to get this one through the mid. Will not quite make it all the way through. Instead, it's YOLO man sending it right back where it came from off the backboard. Very, very close. But that is what your teammates are there for as Link1 scoops that one up for the two and a little bit of fight there for the disc unfortunately barracudas were not able to come away with it that was picked up there by link one and was taken in as well that's going to be extending their lead now to 12 points here with three minutes and five seconds to go here in the third yep. quarter yep plenty of time left on the clock as this one bounces into the hands of harper harper now feeding this one forward up to glass doing some moves under some pressure here looking for something finds a good cross over to solar who resets back to vacant vacant now at the island sends it back up to solar p oh no a little bit off on that pass and it bounces into the hands of its yolo man instead yolo looking for this cross clear it's going to require a little bit of help from one and only but it does get through bouncing all the way into the bubble almost in the goal but it's solar p home first looking to send this one up it's vacant with it now vacant looking for the clear but not quite finding it one and only on the back line scoops this one up sends it over to rev on the pac-man rev now low cross up to link one link on the floor driving and do it himself finds another two points here for Columbus. 
Lumbus now up by 14 here in this third quarter. Nothing to be discouraged about, though, if you're the Barracudas. You just you still have plenty of time here to make something happen. You just need to find what's going to work for you against this Columbus Fire team as their defense and offense has just been impeccable tonight. Yep. 100 percent and now i mean pulling away to a four, 14 point lead excuse me that is nothing to scoff at and maybe yes no they will not add to it as one and only is denied by the ding ring but now rev taking his turn also not going to go in what a save there i think that was harper this time around as it is picked up now by glass glass looking for this clear but link one being sneaky there behind the bow tie gets the interception sends it to one and only who puts it in with the bounce two yeah, beautiful, beautiful far pocket there on the left side. Definitely took a weird bounce after that, but was still the pocket and placement indeed. It definitely messed up that goalie there for the Barracudas. Yep, 100%. And now up by 16. You know, we said earlier you can't get comfortable, but uh, this is a nice-looking lead right now for the side of Columbus. Chattanooga needs to find a way to shut it down right now. Harper with it now in the trap area under some pressure from one and only. Sends this one over to Glass. Glass in the midfield doing some moves, looking for something to open up, but her team not advancing down the arena just yet. Sends this one over to Vacant to create some time. Who's looking for the high cross over to Harper, but instead it bounces into the hands of Rev, but intercepted by Vacant. Looking for redemption here. Sends this one up to Glass, who slams that one in for the two. Another two points there coming from Glass for the Barracudas. And you mentioned getting comfortable like we mentioned earlier. Something here that I've noticed is, especially at Echo, you, you can get comfortable to an extent where it's, it's bad for you, but you can also get comfortable to where it's where you're just rolling. You're, you're, you're steamrolling train, going down the tracks fast and hot, and no slowing down. Definitely here is the fire as Yellow Man sends it over to the right side, trying to get a pass off to his teammate, but does not find it with 15 minutes rolling down. In this arena, that's going to be cleared out deep now. The t stacks are not going to be able to pick it up for the Barracudas. Link 1, though, going to pick it up, trying to find that shot. As the shot clock expires here in this third quarter, psych. We may be able to see something here in this third quarter, but we'll talk about that here in a second as we're going to roll to our commercial break. One American with a burning desire to save the world from high prices. He is the stuntman that saved the world. <laughs> He is looking to destroy high prices. A man that brought the world together because of his love for Kawasaki. One man strapped to a 2021 Terex KRX 1000. The stunt man that saved the world. Get your favorite Kawasaki motorcycles, ATVs, and side-by-sides today at Holzhauer Pro Motorsports in Nashville, Illinois. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back, and I have with me Psychaotic. Psychaotic, like I said, mentioned here, we may be able to see something coming from the Barracudas. What do you think? Listen, they are slowing the pace, which is, you know, they haven't quite turned it around just yet, but they are slowing the pace of Columbus Fire, at which that, you know, the, the point differential is is expanding, which is a good sign going into this final quarter that maybe they can, uh, you know, slow it down completely or even turn it in the opposite direction, which is what, you know, we're all hoping for because we all love seeing a close game. Um, but right now at 20 to 14, it is not looking ideal, but it is also not over is not over indeed and still eight minutes and another whole quarter to go here 14 points is easily doable i've seen it done before i've done it myself and yeah as these teams roll out psych go ahead and take it away all right here we go into the final quarter here between chattanooga barracudas and columbus fire a powerful headbutt coming out there from fire but it's picked up by vacant first he'll lose it and it is a, a fight going on up there finally it is the stack for chattanooga getting there first sending it through but it's read instead by the fire they're not quite going to be able to get this one cleared out just yet it's going to require a little bit of help here from yolo yolo sending this one forward as it bounces now into the hands of link one link one over to rev and rev we know what he does with those. He'll get another two points here for five. Yeah, and taking a step back real quick to that initial joust, that headbutt had some steam behind it. Yeah, you'd had to be scared if that uh, if that was coming towards you. Uh, I definitely would. 100%. But now, here come the Barracudas. It's going to be vacant as the QB, sending this one high to Solar P. Solar just sending this one forward, looking for something, but instead will find the hands of its YOLO man. YOLO now looking for the clear. Takes an awkward bounce, but hey, totally calculated as it bounces into the hands of Rev. Rev sending this one forward now, where it will be recovered by vacant at the cloud. 
Fake it now. Cross looking for, ooh, maybe looking for that stack, but instead it will be recovered here by Rev once again. Rev just looking to get rid of it, but it's not quite able to find the clear. Harper sending this one in. Oh, very, very close off the backboard into the hands of Glass, who now will take her turn, and this time she will not be denied. I mean, even if it's got to go through the goalie's hands, that is going in for the two. Going in for the two, it is indeed, and we do have a drop over the side of fire, so it is going to be a 3v4 situation here until they get that player back in. This is the time for the Barracudas to take some points back and climb out of that lead. Yep, 100%, and this is why you have the fifth player in the in the spawn room, is just in case something like this happens. But now with this 3v4, we'll see what happens. And maybe the Barracudas can get some points on the board, like you said, and maybe it starts here, as it is going to be picked up by Vacant, sending this one off the backboard, off the shield, into the hands of Glass. Blows this one down for just a moment on the floor here under the boot. Looking for something. A bunch of stunned out teammates, but she does find Vacant who puts this one in for the two. two. More points there for the Barracudas, and now only a 12-point lead in the sight of fire. They're starting to heat up here. The Barracudas, though, it might be a 3v4. This may be the momentum they need for the rest of this quarter just to bring it back in time. Yep, maybe, maybe, maybe. Just over five minutes remaining in the quarter. Still a 3v4. Yolo Man sending this one forward where it's picked up by Rev, then fed back, looking for that cross. But instead, it's going to bounce high up into the hands of Yolo just outside the bubble. The quick pass over to Link 1, and Link 1, we know what he does. He gets another two here for Columbus. Yeah, and now a 14 point, back up to a 14 point lead here in favor of the Columbus Fire. They just need to find something here on the offense of. The offensive side of the fire here to put themselves back in this game only only need a three to tie them bring themselves back with an 11 only a two to bring themselves back within 12 and still plenty of time to do it as Harper sends a low over to solar. Yep, Solar sending it right back over to Harper. Harper now taking this one to the ceiling, down low cross to Glass, just outside the bubble. Glass doing some moves on the wall, looking for this cross back to Harper, and Harper with the cross pocket shot gets the two just as one and only gets back in the arena. Uh, now, now a 4v4 situation again here. Barracudas were able to close that gap just a little bit though. I think we were looking at a 16 point lead when one and only drop. Now only a 12 point lead here for the for the Columbus Fire. Yep, for the Columbus Fire, it's going to be It's Yolo Man at the nest, sending this one over across to Rev in the tunnel. Rev looking to feed this one through, but oh no, it takes a bad bounce instead into the hands of one and only, totally calculated. Trust me, guys, as one and only, oh no, puts that off the ding ring, out of the bubble, into the hands of Rev. He just whips this one back, looking for the reset. Beautiful reset there. When, uh, it's Yolo Man with it now at the bow, sending this one low cross to Link 1, driving up one more, cut to Rev, and that's how they do it. They are to 40 with that two-pointer. They found that 40 mark, and it was pointed out by Juice Fur and Chat, and typically we've seen it uh, in the situation of the team sitting 40. Typically, the first one of 40 takes it. But 3 minutes and 30 seconds here as we roll out of these tubes. That's going to be Barracuda's handling it. Yep. Barracuda's handling this one, sending it up, but one and only with the grab. Looking to send it back through. Not quite just yet. Bouncing instead back into his own hands. A complicated self-pass. Totally calculated as he sends this one through the mid. Bouncing low off the trench. Now up high. It is going to be Rev there first. Sending this one up to Link 1, who is quick to capitalize with another two-pointer. Capitalize indeed. Link 1 not hesitating there off the pass from Rev. And, and the Columbus Fire now just just on fire. They have been this entire game, but this fourth quarter, they have just not let the Barracudas gain on them at all. Now back up to a 16-point lead. Yep, back up to 16 points indeed. It is vacant. Walking this one forward before sending it through, but oh no, takes a bad bounce there into the trap area where we'll be hauled in by Rev. Rev up to Link 1. Link 1 looking at an open goal off the backboard into the hands of one and only who helps it along for the two. Yeah, one and only there saying, slapping that disc right back in, saying, get, get your butt in there. What, what you doing? You need, to, you need to get in that goal. Now up by 18 points here is the Columbus Fire with 2 minutes and 16 seconds as we roll these tubes. Yep, we will see here who, you know, at this point I think it is the ice, but it is just going to be a matter of who takes some more points home with them. As Rev now looks to send this one through the low mid, bouncing into the hands of Link 1, and Link gets it done with the three-pointer there for Columbus. I thought I, I, thought I, thought I hopped into the booth of Palador for a second there. 
<laughs> Link one gets it done. Watch out. Psycho coming in with the rhymes here. <laughs> Don't encourage me. They only get worse from here. <laughs> I'd love to see it. It's muted in the back saying that they are out of mathematical time. That is going to be the game in the hands of the Columbus Fire. But let's see what the Barracudas can do here to take home some points as Harper finds himself three more points to put them up to close that gap now by 80 points, I want to say. Don't let me be wrong here, Bearded. <laughs> It is. It is an 18 point difference here right now, winding down to just over a minute remaining in the final quarter. Let's see how Columbus plans to answer back. It starts with a QB from its YOLO man who sends this one through the tunnel into the hands of Link and Link looking at the open goal, but no! Solar P there just in time to get this one picked up and sent through the opposite side tunnel. Now bouncing off the rock up high toward the pack. Who's going to be there first? It's Rev for the side of the Columbus Fire. Rev under no pressure sends this one up to Link 1 at the Station. Link now with a little bit of space to work with sends this one low cross over to one and only one and only stopping at the nugget keeping an eye at on that pressure and uh, playing this one slow hits Yolo man in motion but no denied by Solar P a beautiful save there and it'll be picked up here by Harper under a little bit of pressure sends this one through the tunnel all the way down into the bubble of Columbus fire going to go careening across the bubble before anybody gets a hand on it and it's actually vacant there first flinging this one up looking for Harper finds Solar P instead, and oh, what a pocket shot there for the two. And as this game winds down, that is going to be a 16-point deficit. Sorry, math is hard. 16-point deficit. The Barracudas, though, not don't got to go home hanging their heads low. They did play a beautiful, beautiful game here. Just not able to get going on offense here tonight as these teams and game comes to an end. Beautiful, beautiful win in the favor of the Columbus Fire Psyche. I said Psyche. Psyche. <laughs> Chaotic. Oh my gosh. Pretty interesting mispronunciations of my name before, but I don't think I've heard that one. <laughs> <laughs> Bear with me. It's all good. It's all good. But yeah, a beautiful, beautiful performance there by both of these teams uh however it is in in the end going to be columbus fire taking this one and you know what i think the key to it is that they were they were running the midfield and the, the, the high pressure stacks the beautiful movement up and down the arena uh just running circles around the barracudas this evening and uh, it, it, it paid off for them with a beautiful win it did indeed in in nepa fashion we do have to give out our stuntman award tonight oh man this is a tough tough decision it's you know one and only playing a beautiful game tonight. Definitely offensively strong here as we see on the stats. Uh, we do have the stats for one and only. They are not as concurrent as I would like them to be. He did have, I want to say, 15, maybe 16 points before the dropout. My vote tonight is going to go to one and only. Psychotic? Oh, you know what? I was thinking, man... We're gonna we're gonna have to agree to disagree. You know what, muted? I've only done like two casts here this evening. Is it is it okay to give it to, to the not winning team? Is that a thing we can do? Because we have to shout out Solar P. I mean, Solar P shutting it down on defense, getting it done once he's got into the bubble, just just killing it this evening. And uh, I, you know, a great performance by Columbus Fire, by one and only by every player on that team. But without Solar P, I really think this would have been much, much more in the favor of Columbus this evening. So that is going to be my pick. Split decision here. And uh, well, it's going to be up to chat to side here tonight as <laughs> Muta's going to be making a poll here for you guys. But I want you guys to stay tuned. We are going to have more NEPA TV action coming to you here in about 10 minutes. We're going to have the Mulberry Reverb versus the Scottsdale Slither here at 8 p.m. Central Time. Ladies and gentlemen, don't you go anywhere. Or if you do, go grab your popcorn, go grab your water, go grab anything you need to stay and enjoy these games here with us tonight. It has been a pleasure for this first game. We shall see you guys here soon.
30 seconds. This one is loose in the destroyer zone. Collected by Saluda. Stunned out. Picked up by Game. Stunned out. Zenith with it. Is it? Try to Trying clear to it. Clear it out. 20 seconds. Game gets it back here. Game turning it around. Sends this one in off the floor. Gets it to Rosie Hope. Rosie has uh, Zenith pressuring. 13 seconds. Sending this one in. Stunned out. No. What a shielder from Incorn. Oh, oh, no. That's it. That's it. That's the victory. That's What's that's the clock? It. What's the clock? That's it. That's, that's it. it. That's it. In the last second, <laughs> the Orlando Cyclones come back 33 to 32. Are you kidding me? What? I've got nothing. You know, forget finals. What was that? What was that? No, <laughs> no, not look at, no. Look at no. that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that camera. That was unbelievable. I cannot believe what just happened. I cannot believe what just happened. On that read.
We are back, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna have a quick start here as these teams are readying up. Psych, we got, uh, who do we got on us? Who do we got for these games? Oh, no, we don't. We got some time, actually. I lied. Psych, we who do we got for these teams? I mean, hey, you know what? Over on the side of Mulberry Reverb, we have Rip Red, Salty Raccoon, Frozen Scorpio, and Tasuna. This is a powerful roster here. I actually had the pleasure of casting Reverb last week, and I was very pleasantly surprised with what I saw. I know Reverb has gone through some roster changes over the course of the season, but it seems like they have gelled and they are ready to go. I mean, is there anything in particular you are expecting from them this evening, Z Gunslinger? Not in particular. I did get to watch the uh, Scottsdale Slither play last week. Have not seen the Mulberry Reverb just yet, but I'm expecting uh, expecting a performance for both these teams. Both both teams have players I know, and uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm ready to see these teams play. So I'm I'm excited. Uh, stay with me for a second. Unknown, I Foxy, Gunny Saw, and Chewy Stack on the side of the Scottsdale Slither. All players that I'm f very familiar with, and yeah. I'm uh, I'm ready. I am a Slither fan indeed, Juice. Juice saying in chat there. These teams are going to be readying up. So, Psych, I am going to toss it over to you as these teams roll out here. Yep, absolutely. I mean, as you know, the last time I was on here, I also casted Scott, uh, Scottsdale, now that you say that, and Nails started hashtag Echo Twins because that chem between Unknown and iFoxy is incredible. I'm excited to see that too. But here we go into the first quarter, disc in the middle, stacks in the tubes, and away we go. This first touch is going to go to the side of the reverb, a good head, but into the hands of a rip red, driving in, numbers advantage, looking for the cup, but oh no, just a little bit too low. And uh, it's okay though, they do get back to it. It's Rip Red on the floor, sending this one low cross to Tasuna. Tasuna with one more to Frozen Scorpio, who sends that one in for the two. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful two points there from Frozen Scorpio off the pass from Tasuna. Quick, quick 17 second goal time there to get us started here in this first quarter. That is going to be a two point lead now for the Mulberry Reverb. Yep, good stuff there, but here comes Scottsdale. It's going to be iFoxy as the QB, sending this one forward through low, bouncing all the way up to Gunny Saw. What a pass, but the shot, ooh, very close to working off the bounce. However, it is going to require one more pass and then a save there from Salty Raccoon. My goodness, I was ready to call that as a goal, but he comes out of nowhere to keep it out. However, this clear is going to go right into the hands of Unknown, so it looks like Scottsdale is going to have another try as Unknown is stacked together here with Gunny Saw, getting to it in the mid before slapping it forward looking for a teammate but instead it's going to bounce off the boot back toward the bow tie into the hands of unknown a now beautiful bounce pass over to ifoxy and you know what i called it earlier and here they are unknown to ifoxy for the two first two points here for scottsdale yeah two points there for the slither to answer back first is the mulberry reverb Definitely, uh, definitely, you know, neck and neck here now. Gonna be trying to get, uh, try to get an answer here. Back is going to be the Mulberry Reverb as they roll out. Yep, rolling out here. It is going to be into the hands of Chewy Stack. Chewy looking to send this one back up the arena, bouncing into the hands of. So uh, Salty Raccoon barely getting the slap on it there. Gunny Saw sending this one, but oh my goodness, Salty, what a save there. Keeping it out of the goal, getting it to the mid, not cleared just yet. It's going to require a little bit of help here from Rip Red, who rips that one forward, bouncing off the back wall into the hands of Unknown, who uh, looks to send this one through the close side tunnel, but instead it is not going to be recovered here. I'm calling things a little bit early right now. The teams are, you know, still warming up, still getting ready, uh, you know, getting into this game, uh, getting into the flow of things. And speaking of, I, Foxy, looking to disrupt that flow as he steals that one away for the two. Yeah, the stack's there for the Slither coming in quick and was able to get that steal off, allowing iFoxy to get that get that slam dunk and get those two points, now extending the Slither's lead up to two now. Yep, up by two, which is nothing at all and plenty of time left on the clock. This one's going to be Salty sending this one over into the trap area. Looking here for a teammate, finds Tasuna. Tasuna doing some moves to keep it away from the defense. Sends this one up to Frozen Scorpio in the mid. Frozen just backing this one out to open up that lane up to Salty at the table, who feeds it forward. Now looking for Rip Red. Oh no, just a little bit too far in front of him. And that is an easy pickup for Gunny Saw, but not an easy clear as it bounces off of that sky trench into the hands of Gunny. Gunny and he's stunned out there by Frozen, who gets the disc to Rip Red now. Rip Red, low cross up to Tasuna. Tasuna looking to drive in, and he does a beautiful slam dunk there for the side of Reaver. Tasuna there answering right back to iFox. These two points there earlier, taking it in and getting that slam dunk. 
now tying it up here the mulberry reverb definitely trying to stay here with the slither as slither roll out here gonna be taking a pickup is i foxy Yep, I, Foxy, pausing at the nest, drawing out this pressure here from Frozen, a beautiful duck, before sending it through high mid, bouncing around off the cloud, now down low into the hands of Gunny Saw, who gets the quick cross over to Chewy Stack. Chewy under immediate pressure, looking for a backboard pass, and does in fact find Gunny Saw, who hits one more cross back to Chewy Stack, who secures the two-pointer there for Slither. Beautiful, beautiful passing there from the side of Slither to extend their lead back up to two points. Back and forth here early on, and you know, something I'm seeing for both teams is just the passing and in, in, inside a bubble and not afraid to take those passes and you know, that's something that's going to pay off here. It's going to see what uh, team can keep it up though as this disc is all the way down into the side of the Slither and that's going to be a save by Unknown! Unknown stopping that goal there and now out is Gunny Saw gonna be picking it up. Oh my goodness. Unknown. What a save. But now it's I Foxy's turn on the wall. Gonna send this one back over to Gunny Saw, who hits the quick double reset back to Unknown on the back line. Unknown now walking this one forward, drawing out some pressure before sending it over cross. It's gonna take an awkward bounce right into the hands of Frozen Scorpio, who sends this one through the tunnel. This is looking good. Where are the stacks? This bounces over across to the opposite side of the arena, hauled in by Frozen Scorpio under a little bit of pressure, looking for this cross over to Rip Red, but no, that one just gonna be a little bit too far off. And instead, it is Slither looking for the clear. This one will go through the tunnel, but not all the way down into the zone of reverb. Chewy Stack picking this one up, looking to send it down there, but oh no, bad bounce off the wall into the trench, back into his own hands. So just a complicated self-pass, totally intentional. And he will hit the reset back to Gunny Saw at the Double Diamonds. Gunny now looking forward, looking for Unknown, finds him off the bounce. Unknown driving in off the boot, doing the behind the back moves, but not quite able to put that one in just yet. It's iFoxy's turn now, driving off the shield forward, looking for the shot. And with the goalie screen, he will find it for the two. Yeah, and iFoxy there got stuck on the floating after he tried to grab the shield, but unfortunately just missed it. Was able, his teammates were able to get the stun out on the goalie and was able to hit that bottom pocket to extend their lead now up to four points. Yep, good coordination there from the side of the Slither at Foxy, identifying that open lane and taking it. But now here comes a reverb, as this one's going to be intercepted now by Gunny Saw. Gunny not quite able to get this one through the mid, takes another crack at it, this time it does. And the pass up to I Foxy is good, and the shot is even gooder. That will go in for the three. Yeah, three more points there coming from I Foxy. The Slither here just getting stops on defense, as we saw there and we're able to get the passes up the, to the field and we're able to get that open goal look. That's now a seven point lead here for the Slither. Yep, seven point lead. And you know they are looking to, uh, you know, put more on the board as they force a bad pass here. It'll be picked up by Unknown. Unknown under some pressure just tries to get this one through the mid, but no Salty Raccoon shutting it down there at the station. Salty now sending this one over to Frozen Scorpio on the floor. Frozen playing patient here, drawing out this pressure from Unknown before sending it over to Rip Red, and Rip Red will sink that one in the, for the two and gets them to back within five. Back within five here. That is the passing we saw earlier from the side of the reverb. Now trying to close that deficit here as this quarter one comes to an end here, but actually not comes to an end here. It's still got 50 seconds here. So as the... As the Slither roll out here, that's going to be slapped away over to Chewy Stack. Chewy Stack now down. Not able to be collected, though. Rip Red's going to find it and sends it back for the reset. Nobody's there, Ooh. though. Looking for the reset, but finds the pass to Gunny Saw instead, who is very happy to say thank you very much and puts that one in for the two. Capitalizing on maybe that miscommunication there from the side of the reverb. Unfortunately, just nobody was back for that reset like Rip Red thought, and that led it. That gave them two more points there in the side of the Slither, now up by seven points. Yep, up by seven, and with 13 seconds remaining, I mean, Reverb looking for one final drive, but no! I Foxy all over the QB, able to get the stun, but not quite the turnover just yet. Rip Red now just looking to get rid of it, five seconds remaining, flung forward, and no! As that goes off the shield, that will do it for here for us in the first quarter. Scottsdale up 13 to 6, and Z is going to break it all down for you right after a quick word from our sponsors.
ladies and gentlemen, we are back and we have more echo to bring you guys here. Something I'm seeing so far from both of these teams is the passing and beautiful, beautiful execution on both sides here. Unfortunately, just able to pay off a little bit more for the side of the Scottsdale Slithers that they have been able to get some defensive stops here, allowing those open goals. We saw iFox hit an open three earlier that extended their lead to, I want to say it was 11 or 12 points. Uh, well, it was 12 to maybe six, I want to say, and now up by, uh, now up 13 to six. I can't do math because that would not be possible. Psych! <laughs> <laughs> yep, here we go into the second quarter. This first touch is going to go to Scottsdale. A beautiful headbutt goes careening across the bubble and into the hands of iFoxy. Looking for the open three, but no good. As that bounces off the backboard, out of the bubble, and into the hands of Chewy Stack. Chewy now doing some moves on the pack, looking for the reset. Oh no, takes a bad bounce and takes a second attempt, but it will go into the hands of Gunny, who looks to redistribute over to iFoxy. I Foxy now under some pressure looks for this pass to Gunny Saw, but oh no, grab the Geo instead of the disc, and it's Frozen Scorpio just trying to uh, headbutt this one along, help it through, and uh, and does as he sends this one forward. It'll be intercepted now by I Foxy, looking to send it back where it came from as it bounces off the Pac Man and into the hands of Chewy Stack once again. Chewy with one pass option up there with him slows down for just a moment and loses it, paying for the hesitation as Rip Red forces this turnover. It's the quick reset to Salty Raccoon. Salty now sending this one over to Frozen, who's looking for this high pass. It does connect here with Tasuna. A quick distribution over to Rip Red under that same pressure now sends it back to Tasuna, who hits a quick reset over to Frozen Scorpio. Frozen now resetting even further back to Salty Raccoon, who was going to slow this one down before sending it to Frozen. Frozen now walking this one in, finds Tasuna up high, and he's going to drive as he has this one on two opportunity, and he takes advantage of it for the two pointer here for Reaver. Passing there coming from Reaver, multiple resets, multiple crosses. We're able to draw the defense of the Slither and allowed those two points to come in from Tasuna inside the bubble. Beautiful, beautiful passing there from the side of Reaver. Yep. Beautiful passing indeed, and now only up by five. But you know they're looking to get that lead right back as iFoxy sends this one over to Unknown in the tunnel. Unknown pausing for just a moment here before firing this one across over to Chewy Stack. A great find. Chewy now pausing at the station. Scottsdale has shifted into the slow control mode, and I love to see it as a Chewy just taking his time up there at the cloud before sending it high cross over to iFoxy driving in. And oh my goodness, Z, can we talk about the placement on that one? Beautiful, beautiful placement indeed. I Foxy saw it and he took it and it paid off there well as that is another two points there for the side of Scottsdale. Now only up by seven points here. They were able to get those two points back that they lost earlier, but the reverb are going to be wanting to answer back here. Oh, they might be looking to answer back, but uh, Scottsdale forcing another turnover here, bouncing off the back wall, flat into the hands of iFoxy, who backs it out for the three, and it does pay off as Chewy Stack puts that one in. Beautiful decision making there from the Slither, backing it out for that three, as you pointed out, Psychotic, and definitely, definitely something smart to do there if you have the time to do it. So, yeah, now up by 10 is the Scottsdale Slither. Yep, up by a 10. Here comes Reverb looking to answer back. It's Frozen Scorpio with it now on the wall under some pressure. Gets the reset back to Salty Raccoon. Salty sending this one forward or at least trying to, but Gunny Saw's got something to say about it. A beautiful interception there, and he'll feed this one forward to iFoxy doing some moves to keep it away from the defense. Hitting, ooh, not hitting the cut. Faked me out, faked the goalie out, faked everybody out, and did it himself for the two. Yeah, taking out everybody indeed. I mean, I was even confused, like you pointed out, so chaotic. Uh, it was it was a beautiful take there by iFoxy. Now to extend our lead by 12 points here. The Reaver maybe trying to find something on these offensive rollouts. Just have not been able to find it just yet. Maybe need to try to change up a strategy here as Salty Raccoon gets pressured. Yep. Salty gets pressured and just sends this one through and maybe it'll work out to Suna in the area, but no, that stack is all over it. Gunny Saw going to haul this one in before looking to clear it cross tunnel. It will require a little bit of help here from iFoxy, who relays this one forward. Looking for unknown. The pass is a little too far in front of him, but he's there anyway. Uh, not able to make the shot work, but you know what? Totally, totally calculated. Just give it back to iFoxy to put that one in for the three. Intentional bounce pass. That was mm. not a miss. We don't. We don't. We don't miss here. <laughs> only bounce passes. Intentional passes only. 
Scottsdale Slither definitely putting on a show here in this second quarter. Now up by 15 points as the reverb roll out. I mean, listen, this is this is the kind of situation your timeout is here for as uh, Scottsdale really starting to get on a roll here. And uh, the momentum for the side of reverb has slowed down, though. Maybe they are pushing down into the Scottsdale zone. Maybe this is what they're looking for. Tasuna taking this one to the floor just outside the bubble, sends this one high cross to Frozen. But no, going to be a little bit off. And it's Chewy Stack picking it up instead. A beautiful clear through that cross side tunnel. It's going to be a race unknown there first. They got numbers in the bubble. The goalie Ooh, under some pressure there and it's just enough to allow Unknown the opportunity to secure the three. He yeah, had an Unknown there. Maybe some communication from his teammates so the goalie was bothered. Not necessarily stunned out, but that's A-OK. -okay. You don't always need to stun out that goalie to get that long shot off as that goalie was bothered and did not have a chance to save it with his shield up. Yep. Not quite. And oh, speaking of shield, Salty Raccoon not able to get that shield up, gets stunned out. And it's another opportunity now for Scottsdale. I Foxy driving in and oh, I mean, a beautiful, beautiful bounce shot off the backboard there for the two. Can we, can we talk about I Foxy for a second? I mean, Absolutely. 18 points here in this second, in this first and second quarter. A crazy performance. I mean, yeah, it's like. Yeah, I mean, absolutely crazy performance. 18 points out of 28. That is insane stuff. Um, and right now, it looks like Reverb just struggling to answer back to this pace is yet another turnover here for Scottsdale, but stolen right back by Rip Red. This could be huge as that goes just a little bit too low. However, Tasuna is in the area and will secure the three pointer. That is exactly what they needed to, to, you know, to get themselves on the board again. And again, we were seeing that offensive rollout there bothered by the Slither. Unfortunately, the Slither was just not able to keep a hold of it, did get taken away, and a shot attempt was tried. Unfortunately, did not find it at first, but Suna was able to answer back off the rebound and get three more points there for the reverb now. Yep, three more points for Reverb, but here comes the Slither. It's unknown, sending this one high cross, looking for Gunny Saw, but oh no, bounces back into the tunnel where it looks like it will be Ripper there first, getting there uh, with an opportunity created by Frozen Scorpio, getting stunned out as Ripper now feeds this one low cross to Tasuna. Tasuna sending it to Salty Raccoon, and hey, this is a sign of life here from the side of Reverb. Sign of life indeed, and the heartbeat is there. As we see that passing that I was mentioning earlier that we saw from them early in the first quarter, breaking it back here and utilizing it here in the end of the second quarter. Now only down by 15, coming back is the reverb here. It is the reverb. I, Foxy, sending this one over cross, looking for Chewy Stack, and it does connect. Chewy pausing here at the station, waiting for some options to get up the arena with him, and it pays off as he connects with Unknown. Unknown under some pressure, and ooh, Frozen Scorpio almost forcing the turnover there. However, the Slither is back to it. I Foxy with it now, looking for a crossover, but bounces instead into the hands of Rip Red. Rip Red losing it for just a moment. They've got it out of the bubble, but not cleared just yet. The speed of Slither. Can we talk about how fast Slither is to get together with these stacks, capitalizing on every possible wow. opportunity that they can? But what a save from a salty raccoon my goodness what a save but here they come again it's i foxy and once oh again denied God. but not quite out just yet 13 seconds remaining somebody wants more points on the board and will it be the slither no oh salty God. raccoon's got something to say about it my goodness and five seconds remaining it's i foxy one more cuts a gunny saw and hey you know what eventually it's gonna go in and that one does for the two. Oh my god folks salty raccoon defensive Insanity right there. We're gonna roll to our halftime sh half time break, but stay with us. We will have, we will be talking about this game here right after we come back from our commercial break. Hold on a minute. Did we hear that right? Dodge is making an electric car? We're talking hypothetical, right? Surely you jest. Dodge? You mean the people who devised the legendary 426 Hemi and sunk it into a sublime missile? You mean the Dodge that created the Hellcat Red Eye and the most powerful muscle car in the world? Makers of the 840 horsepower wheel standing demon? Why on God's green earth would Dodge ever build an electric car? Anybody? Any thoughts out there? Hello?
All season long, that's right, all season long, Nepa will be issuing NFTs to anyone who shows up to the live broadcast and fills out the claim form with a secret pass for password. The form can be found at www.nepavrpro.com forward slash NFT. Each week, we will be highlighting a different franchise as the NFT logo show up each week, and you can collect all 16 teams. The more you collect, the more potential rewards you can unlock. The deadline to submit the claim form is 9 p.m. Eastern on Sunday, September 11th. The week 14 secret password is, get ready, Pro Series. And Psychaotic, we are going to be talking about these teams real quick. I mean, beautiful defensive performance there at the end for the reverb. What do you what do you what do you got to say about that? I mean, Reverb putting up one heck of a fight right now, but the defense from the side of Slither has been phenomenal. I mean, we, I talked about it a little bit while casting, but it is not just a matter of you know reading things; it's the speed at which Slither is getting together that is absolutely exceptional. You know, those the you know the salty had plenty of saves and gets it out of the bubble. However. Once Salty has that save and sends it out, the race is on. You have got to get a stack together and you have got to get back to it. Otherwise, it's going to end up cleared. And Slither has been all over that this evening. The speed at which they are converting, you know, the 50-50s into points is, is exceptional. Indeed, and you're right. You pointed out that earlier. Uh, that speed from the Slither is just insanely fast. If you're going to get those quick slap aways, you got to be ready to get a stack, as you mentioned. And, you know, looking at the stat board, Salty again with those five saves, but points all across the board for the reverb. And same on the other side, iFoxy definitely putting on a show tonight here with 18 points, two assists and one stale. Any players besides iFoxy Psychaotic that are pointing out to you tonight? I mean, we've got Salty with, with five saves. We've got iFoxy with 18 points. And I want to shout out all of the assists from the side of Slither. Listen, it is really easy to see that 18 from iFoxy and talk about that. But without the teammates setting him up, he's not going to get those opportunities. So everybody on the side of Slither, I want to I want to shout out real quick because they've had some awesome, awesome assists. Um, over on the side of the reverb, I mean, we got we to gotta talk about Rip Red running the midfield there, creating a lot of turnovers. Same thing with Frozen Scorpio and Tasuna just finding himself in the right place at the right time, just outside the bubble to put some points on the board. Um, and and they're, they're, they're playing well. The numbers are smaller, uh, but they are playing well. They've just got to find a way to keep up with this slither speed. Indeed they do, and like you said, those teammates in the passing there for the Slither have just been that's just been breaking down that that reverb defense. Reverb, whenever they do get a chance to pass it on the side of the Slither, have been breaking down that uh defense from the Slither, but the the Slither have just been paying it's just been paying off more for them. Getting more more defensive stops, getting more, you know, the stack races have just been, you know, faster, you know, stronger, and just on top of it more better. Uh more better, uh, you know, we're gonna go with that. That works. Totally. And these uh these teams are gonna be as this comes to our end of our halftime break, we still have a we still have a little bit of time. Um I'm excited for the second half. I lied, we do not have time. We're gonna be rolling right into this. But I'm excited for the second half. Anything you're looking forward to here, Psychiatric? Man, I'm looking forward to more saves from Salty Raccoon. He has been killing it this evening and building the hype up. And I, I'm just, I'm so blown away uh, because he did not always, he was not always a goalie. Uh, he's just recently turned into a goalie and the, the <laughs> speed at which he's been able to do that is phenomenal. So I'm looking forward to seeing him some more. And I'm just, I'm looking forward to Scottsdale keeping up with what they're doing right now. Um, because they are they are firing on all cylinders at 30 points by halftime. That is something that we have, you know, that is a feat right there. Indeed it is. And I got to give a shout out to Salty. He was my land, my land uh, teammate back in March. A amazing guy, you know, met him in person, you know, just a humble guy. So big shout out to him. And I'm definitely excited to see more defense coming from the side of the reverb. Hopefully able to turn it more into offensive possession this time, though. Getting those stacks together faster, uh, finding that disc and getting those clear out. Uh, as these teams come out and get into their get into their positions for the joust, hopefully we can see uh, the reverb here come back. But the Slither definitely going to be putting on a show here, trying to keep that non-existent. 
Absolutely. And this first touch going to I Foxy, who feeds that one forward, but I think a little bit of a miscommunication on where the pass recipient was going to be. So that means that it'll be a clear here for Reaver bouncing off the back wall. No, the stack just overshooting this one just a little bit as it bounces back toward the nose. It's Chewy Stack there first, keeping it away from the stack and then sending this one through the mid. We're going to see a stack race as that bounces off the wall into the bubble. It looks like yo, a race going on, but to Suna there with the pickup. Suna sending this one over to Frozen Scorpio under some pressure. Finds that pass to Rip Red in the popcorn area who fires this one into the bubble off the back wall and into the hands of I Foxy. I Foxy taking this one now to the ceiling under some pressure. Hits the quick reset to Gunny and Gunny will send this one up to Chewy Stack. But oh, Frozen Scorpio all over him trying to force this turnover. But it's I Foxy there first instead. I Foxy just sending this one forward. Looks like we're going to see a dribble here from the Slither. Unknown now just outside the bubble. Oh my God. Goodness, and you're recognizing the goalie is just a little out of position and sneaking it in for the three. Yeah, out of position there was the reverb. Just got back, but not quick enough and not in position, unfortunately, for the reverb. But Slither, Slither there, gotta be feeling good after that. Coming out here with a strong three point start here to the uh, third quarter. Yep, strong, strong start, and maybe we'll see some more as they force another turnover. Gunny Saw sending this one all the way in, off the back wall, and into the hands of Salty Raccoon. Salty looking for this clear lane and does, ooh, finds the lane, but not able to get it through the tunnel. It's going to be bouncing back in toward the tra uh, the tr Sky Trench as Rip Red gets the ender, but not quite the possession. Chewy Stack with it now, but Frozen Scorpio does not bite on that ender. It's going to be Frozen sending this one, oh, looking to send this one through, but not quite going to go through. Instead, bouncing into the hands of I Foxy, but he's going to lose it. The quick reset back to Salty is not good. Oh no, that is, you know what? It happens, but that's going to go in for the two. And, the, you know, you know, just out of position there was Salty in the back line. Maybe thought that they had it and he was going to go for the clear there. Unfortunately, did not. And he went opted for the reset and Salty was just not ready for it. So that's going to be another two points after the careless mistake there from the reverb. Yep. It happens. Uh, but now Salty's going to be send, looking to send this one through the mid, bouncing instead into the hands of I Foxy. I Foxy finding this pass on the backboard, or at least trying to. A uh, little bit out of position there, but that is fine. They do get back to it as it's Gunny Saw now sending it up to Chewy Snack. Chewy, under a little bit of pressure here, finds a beautiful bounce pass up to Unknown. Unknown looking to give it back, but oh no, that's going to go off the backboard, out of the bubble, and into the hands of Gunny. Gunny now finding Chewy on the backboard, and oh, what a pass there to Gunny Saw, faking this all out, and Gunny Saw will put that one in for the two. Yeah, beautiful multiple passes there coming from the side of the Slither. We're not, you know, a couple shot attempts, but we're able to turn them into passes no, nonetheless and get the two points there was Gunny Saw. Now extending the Slither's lead up to 24 points. Yep, 24 points. Not looking good here for the side of the reverb, but it is not over yet. As Gunny Saw forces another turnover here all over uh, that with the defense and sends it forward. Connects here with Chewy Stack. Chewy taking some time here on the floor, looking for something. Finds the pass up to Unknown, and Unknown will sink that one in for the two. Yeah, Unknown fighting two more points there to his name, and now extending the lead is the Slither. Slither there, we're able to get a defensive stop there off of Mulberry's re uh, and, uh, offensive jail, sorry. And just paying off here, Mulberry just need to find something to get going here. Have not been able to find the mark just yet here in this third quarter. That's a clear out all the way, and this may be a chance as the backboard shot just goes a little wide. Yep, just a little wide, and that's going to be picked up by Unknown, but he's not quite able to find the clear just yet. It's going to require a little bit of help. The stack under pressure gets stunned out, but Chewy Stack does get this one sent down into the zone of a reverb where they've got four on none. Unknown even backing this one out for the three over to Chewy Stack, and it goes in. And the Slither here putting on a commanding lead in this third quarter, now almost up by 30 points, sitting at a 29-point lead with three minutes and 21 seconds to go here as Mulberry's gonna roll out, try to get something to answer back. It's gonna be tough for them to climb out of this one, but they may just be able to do it as Salty Raccoon dunks, ducks that defender. 
Yep, he gets the duck and the pass over to Rip Red, who sends this one low cross to Frozen. Frozen looking to give it back. It does connect, and he'll send this one into the bubble to Tasuna. Tasuna just outside on the wall, sends it to Frozen, and oh my goodness, what a cut, what a shot. That will go in for the two. And there's that passing that I mentioned earlier from the reverb side. They, uh, when they do get that passing going, they, they are more than likely going to get that disc in the goal and get some points to their name, but just have not had many chances on the offensive side tonight due to the Slitter's defense. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're totally on it. You know, once they've gotten it through them in, they've had some some good luck with converting on those opportunities. But, I mean, just like that, the, the, the mid has been dominated here by the Slither as they convert on yet another opportunity for the two. Yeah, and maybe some miscommunication there. I saw a goalie floating back, and Chewy Stack was also or not Chewy Stack. Sorry, I want to say that was Scorpio and goal. I might be wrong. Don't hold me to that. And pushed out as that goalie was just not in a position yet. Unfortunately, allowing two more points there for the Slither. Yep, two more points, and now they're looking to add to it as they force another turnover. But no, this one will get slapped out of the bubble, right into the hands of Unknown. Unknown on the wall, slowing this one down, taking it to the ghost under some pressure, and loses it here to Rip Red. Rip Red looking for the clear, will not quite go out. Instead, it's going to be picked up here by Gunny Saw. Gunny now firing this one, a beautiful, oh my goodness, that pass. But what a save there by Salty Raccoon, my goodness, keeping that one out of the goal for now. Unknown gets there first and sends it back to Gunny Saw. Now, over cross to iFoxy. iFoxy doing some moves, trying to get on through, but no good as that bounces off the floor and into the hands of Chewy Stack. Stolen away by Salty. Salty this time. The clear will not go through either. Oh no. Bouncing up high into the popcorn area where it will be hauled in by Gunny. Gunny over cross now to Unknown. Unknown looking for one more cut, but no good. Instead bounces back into the hands of Gunny Saw who cannot get through Rip Red. Rip Red's not falling for that. Rip Red now sends this one through the mid, but oh my goodness. The stack already together here from both teams. Looks like both overshot it, but it is going to be Frozen there first on the wall. Frozen, stalling for some time here, looking to send this one over cross to Rip Red. The pass is just a little bit off, but it's okay because Tasuna is there. Tasuna now sends this one back over to Frozen Scorpio on the floor. Frozen driving this one up, looking for Salty Raccoon. Salty under some pressure here, looking for something, gets through one and resets back to Tasuna on the bow tie. Tasuna now low cross, looking for Frozen, but finds the hands of Gunny Saw instead, who's looking to send this one through the mid. Stacks together here for the Slither. Unknown firing this one up to I Foxy, and oh my goodness, the dynamic duo at it again with another three. Yeah, the Echo Twins right there. Definitely using that brother chemistry that they have and not uh, not afraid to take that three, even with the stack of Mulberry Reverb coming in quickly. That's another three points here for the Slither. Yep, another three points up by, I mean, what is that? 30, 32 now? 32 at this point? As a Reverb with 10 seconds remaining, they're in the bubble. They have the opportunity. It is going to be Tasuna with the three. Very good awareness to back that one out. Yeah, good awareness indeed, and to close that gap of 32 to 30, or 29 now, here in this end of the third quarter. We're going to be rolling into the fourth quarter here shortly. Stay tuned with us as we send you guys to our commercial break. We have more Echo coming to you here shortly. One American with a burning desire to save the world from high prices. He is the stuntman that saved the world. A man that brought the world together because of his love for Honda. One man with four wheels strapped to a parallel twin engine. The stuntman that saved the world. Get your favorite Honda motorcycles, ATVs, and side-by-sides today at Holzhauer Pro Motorsports in Nashville, Illinois. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back and we have more Echo to bring you here. We got the Scottsdale Slither versus the Mulberry Reverb. Scottsdale Slither up by 29 points here at the end of the third quarter, start of fourth quarter. And so far, it's been a one-sided game so far, just in the favor of the Slither here, taking a commanding lead, the stacks all over the field, really just putting on a show, putting on a show-stopping performance here is the Slither. Yep, Slither has just been running the arena this evening, and I mean, Reverb has like no time to turn this around. They're going to run out of mathematical time rather quickly. 
As here it comes, Reverb looking to, you know, have something to say about it. It's up into the hands of Rip Red. Rip Red finds this backboard pass, and oh, I don't know if it was off the head or through the hands, but either way, that will go in for the two. That was one of the hardest Chicago's I've seen in a while. Uh, and yeah, you know, I don't know if that was a head. I, you know, I don't really know what that was. That might have been a Chicago, might have been a headbutt. I couldn't really tell. No matter the less, points are points. The lead of Scottsdale is now 27 points. Oh, 27 points and looking too extended is that beautiful head, but oh my goodness, return fire with the, with the off the head or through the hands. Not sure which, but uh, that's another two points now for Scottsdale. Yeah, Scottsdale there doing that little, uh, I think it was a headbutt and then got another headbutt on the floor side. It was a little bit funny to see, but nonetheless worked out here in the favor of the Scottsdale Slither. Yep, it works out. Here comes Reverb once again. Salty just firing this one high under some pressure, and it bounces into the hands of Unknown. Unknown now under a little bit of pressure. Sends this one through where it will be picked off here by Salty Raccoon. Salty pre-stacked with a teammate. Looks to walk this one through the tunnel. Under some pressure, finds a beautiful low cross over to Rip Red, who relays it forward now to Frozen Scorpio. Frozen looking for one more cut, and oh, very, very close on that shot from Rip Red, but not quite going to go in. Instead, they will have another crack at it. It's Tasuna now on the shield, looking for a hand, losing his bearings, but does get back to it to secure the two-pointer. Yeah, and Tasuna there, like you said, losing a hand. That's the second time we've seen something like that happen in this game. Happening to iFoxy in that first quarter earlier. Uh, but Tasuna was able to get that grab on shield, takes it in, and get those two points in the bottom pocket. Closing that, closing that gap, but it just might be out of mathematical time here nonetheless, no matter what here as the Scott still still the roll out, but that's going to be a long shot coming in from the Reverb. Reverb just not able to find it just yet. That's going to be picked up by Scorpio on the other side. Scorpio sending it over to Salty Raccoon. Salty trying to send the passes, does find it, and that's two more points there from Tasuna. Listen, it does not matter how much time is on the clock. Reverb is here for the fight. It does not matter. They're going to continue to put points on the board, uh, no, no matter what the score is. But with five and a half minutes remaining and down by, what is that, 25? Whew. I mean, that, they've got to, they literally have to double their points in one quarter. It is not looking good. I Foxy now at the bow time, sending this one through cross to Chewy Stack. Chewy now looking for that open goal, but Salty Raccoon has got something to say about it. Gets the interception and now keeping an eye out on this incoming pressure it looks to send it at low cross over to frozen scorpio frozen backing this one out for just a moment before sending it forward to tasuna tasuna hits a beautiful pass over to rip red now down low to salty raccoon it is the one-on-one -on -one battle of the goalies and he will win it for the two yeah, and Reverb here trying to rally here in this last quarter. Definitely have been able to put on some points so far, closing that gap now to 23 points, I want to say, with four minutes and 44 seconds as these teams roll out. Yep, I mean, Reverb fired out of a cannon right now makes me wonder what it would have been like if we had seen this all game as, oh, another turnover here. Rip Red sending this one forward into the hands of Tasuna. Tasuna looking for the shot, not quite going to go in. Instead, it's uh, unknown getting a hand on it, but not quite getting the clear. There we go. Look at that. The stack speed there from the side of Reverb getting together to get back to it. However, they're not able to work it back into the zone of Scottsdale. Instead, it's Chewy Stack sending this one up to iFoxy and the open goal. No good off the ring very very close though instead now picked up here by Tasuna. Tasuna walking this one forward hits the reset back to salty raccoon drawing out this pressure before sending it forward but oh no that is where chewy stack is waiting for the interception chewy now sending this one to gunny saw and gunny saw one more cut to unknown and that will do it another two here for scottsdale another two indeed and in that that passing from scottsdale We've been seeing that all night, and, you know, it definitely has not been a solo game. As looking at them, they all have, you know, a good couple assists to their name. In total, as a team, they have 17 assists, I want to say. I might be wrong on that. Stand by with me. But these teams are rolling out nonetheless. Oh, it is 17 assists. The, the movement here from the side of Scottsdale has been nothing short of phenomenal. Uh, but this game is not over yet. Three and a half minutes remaining, and this one is drifting back into the zone of reverb. However, Rip Red is on the scene to get the pickup. 
He's going to stop for just a moment, getting through that pressure here from I Foxy. Now moving up the arena before sending it through the tunnel all the way through. It's going to bounce over across. This is going to be a race. It's Gunny Saw there first, barely getting rid of it in time before getting pressured. However, it will not go through. Frozen is there first, sending this one up to Tasuna. Tasuna with the one on a three, doing some moves to find some time and gets the pass over to Rip Red, but Rip Red just not quite able to get rid of it. Uh, and now it's going to be cleared toward the midfield area. The stacks are together, but Salty is faster. He'll get the pickup and the send up to Frozen. Frozen over to Rip Red, and Rip Red gets shut down by Unknown. What a save. Back and forth headbutts, but eventually it is going to be Rip Red there for the two. I want to point out what just happened there. <laughs> Tasuna picked it up. Rip Red was stunned out, but got out of stun, unfortunately. Took it from Tasuna, anchored off of Tasuna, and got the two points. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful play there from the side of Reverb. Hey, I mean, sometimes you just gotta say, if it works, it works. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> but, uh, hey, here they come again, as this is a bad pass picked up by Tasuna. They have the numbers in the bubble, sending this one low cross over to Salty Raccoon, driving in off the ding ring, off the shield, and into the hands of Frozen. Oh no, you can't take that through the shield. It's gonna bounce now into the hands of I Foxy, who's looking for this low clear, bouncing into the hands of Gunny Saw. Gunny Saw now up high, sending this one up to I Foxy, who drifts all the way back to the bow tie. I Foxy hits this cross looking over for Gunny Saw, but no good. Instead, it'll be picked up here by Frozen, who gets one heck of an ender, but not the clear. Not just yet. It's going to require a steal from Tasuna, and the clear is good, bouncing all the way off the shield. Oh no, both of those incoming players not quite able to read it just yet. Unknown on the scene in the trap, picking this one up under a little bit of pressure, sends this one forward and finds Gunny Saw. Gunny saw now, maybe drifting in for this one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, nobody getting home, and he's going to take it himself. Gets a beautiful duck there for the two. Beautiful duck indeed, and was not afraid to take it in on the defense of the reverb. Sitting there bleed back up here, and the reverb just been slowing down here. Just definitely been iced, and, uh, you know, nonetheless, a beautiful performance there in the, in the last quarter and all throughout the game from the reverb. As these teams are going to roll out with a headbutt, maybe a last minute Hail Mary play here as Frozen Scorpio gets the stun out, but falls into the hands of Chewy Stack. Chewy Stack clears it all the way down. That is going to be picked up by... Well, it's going to end up in the fans of Ifoxy. Ifoxy doing some spinning around against the two points. Yeah, what a move there from iFoxy to secure the two-pointer here for Slither. And that is going to be another two points as they go up 55 to 28. That is a 27-point difference. And with 30 seconds remaining, that will be GG. It is just a matter of, you know, if, if anybody gets some more points on the board. We'll see. As now it's Reverb coming out for the Joust Advantage. Salty Raccoon at the nest sends this one forward to Rip Red. Rip Red now drifting forward, looking for this pass over across to Frozen Scorpio, but oh no, just a little bit off and picked off by iFoxy instead. iFoxy doing some moves at the Ghost, looking for some open lanes, finds the high clear as it bounces off the Sky Trench down low to the floor. A stack race, and that will be won by Rip Red, who hits the quick reset to Salty. And Salty just wasting some time here in the bubble to finish us out here in the final quarter. Scottsdale Slither taking this one 55 to 28 over Mulberry Reverb. Yeah, Pete. Beautiful performance there from the Slither and Reverb. Unfortunately, the, the, the Slither just had everything going for them tonight. Uh, iFoxy with a commanding 23 points, Gunny with 12, Unknown with 10, and you know, assist all over the board, Psychaotic. We saw that all night from the Slither here, and, and, it, and it definitely paid off. The stacks as well. Yep, the stack, uh, the stacks as well. And I mean, taking a look at some of these stats, if my computer would, you know, help me out just a little, bud. Are we good? Yes, we are. I mean, listen, iFoxy's got a 20, you know, 23 points. But can we talk about Unknown for just a moment here? I mean, 10 points, which is 13 points less, but still 10 points to his name. Six assists, four saves and a steal and 40 stuns i mean this man is all over the arena tonight and though it was i foxy taking the glory with the points unknown was with him every step of the way to set him up and for that reason he has got to be my player of the game you know and, and i gotta you know i don't know it's a tough choice here because all these players played a fantastic game I mean, Salty over on the other side with eight saves to his name. Beautiful defensive game from him tonight. Um, but the Slither, you know, like you said, that chemistry from Un Unknown and iFoxy, the Echo Brothers there. One of the one of the sets of Echo Brothers we have. Oh, man, this is a tough one. I think I'm going to have to agree with you, though, here, Psychaotic. It's going to have to go to Unknown for me tonight. 
Yep. Absolutely. So congratulations to unknown player of the game. Great work from them tonight. Great work from all of Scottsdale. Um, and, uh, you know, a solid fight from Mulberry Reaver. But in the end, it is going to be Scottsdale taking home the W this evening. I do believe we do have one final game for us tonight. I do not remember who it is, but we got one more. We do. We do. It's going to be Daytona Tide versus the Ottawa Frost. If you guys want to stay tuned for that, I'm sure it's going to be more great echo action here on NEPA TV. We're going to be taking a quick break. We will be right back to you guys here within a couple minutes. Stay tuned. Seconds. This one is loose in the destroyer zone. Collected by Saluda. Stunned out. Picked up by Game. Stunned out. Zenith with it. Is it? Try to, Try to clear to it. Clear it out. 20 seconds. Game gets it back here. Game turning it around. Sends this one in off the floor. Gets it to Rosie Hope. Rosie has uh, Zenith pressuring. 13 seconds. Sending this one in. Stunned out. No. What a shield there from A4. Oh, oh no! no! Get the finish. That's the victory. That, What's that's the clock? It. What's the clock? That's it. That's it. In the last second, the Orlando Cyclones come back 33 to 32. Are you kidding me? What? I've got nothing. You know, forget finals. What was that? What was that? No, <laughs> no, not look at, no, look at no. that. Put me on camera. Put look me on that. camera. That was unbelievable. I cannot believe what just happened. I cannot believe what just happened on that read.
Nice, we are back. And we have both teams in the arena. We're going to be seeing the Daytona Tide versus the Ottawa Frost here in our last matchup of the night. And, you know, I'm excited to see these teams. Chocolate, Unsound, Soma, Faster X, and Super Bunny for the side of the Frost. Psycho, who do we have for the side of the Tide? Well, on the side of the Tide, we do have Arch Voodoo 25, Paranim, Ryan JS, and Jack G. I do believe that is the full roster here for Daytona Tide. Yeah, and, and you know, Tide, this is the, you know, I know all the players on the Tide, but uh, this is the first time we'll see them playing together as a team. Uh, I didn't mention the nails last week. I have not been caping up with Nepa as much as I should. So, uh, uh, I, you know, shame on me. You know, you guys could shame me in the shame me in the comment section. So, uh, but we're looking at uh, the number one seed in the East versus the four seed in the East. And, uh, well, the Frost have definitely clinched themselves a playoff spot here, and the Tide have also clinched themselves a wild card slot. So definitely going to see these teams fighting here, uh, and it's going to be a good matchup, I expect. Yep, it is definitely going to be a good matchup. And, you know, speaking on that point you just made about, you know, where Ottawa is going to end up in the seeding. Listen, right now, Ottawa, if they win this game, they secure the first seed. If they lose it and the Constellations uh, win their game, uh, they will lose that first seed to the Constellations. They will go down to number two. But as you said, you know, completely locked into playoffs at this point. And uh, over on the side of Daytona, nothing on the line for them right now. They are actually, they are stuck in that number four seed as well. Uh, actually, their first wild card game will be against my team the scranton royals next week so that is super exciting well good luck to you and uh hopefully i can catch it to uh see to see you guys play them and uh you know I'm, I'm i'm just ready uh you know to see these teams play up it, it, sounding for the sounds of it this is definitely gonna be a good matchup especially with the you know all five players in here so if you know something's not working we can get a switch out here and uh, maybe change up the flow and pace for both teams uh, that is going to be a side ready up on the side of the frost. Uh, Psycho, any last like key notes I should be uh, noting here for these teams as we get ready to roll in here? I mean, listen, neither of these teams are teams to be slept on. Even over on the side of Daytona Tide at number four, listen, they recently picked up Paranim and they have been a powerhouse ever since. This is not the same Daytona Tide that we saw at the beginning of the season. And uh, over on the side of, uh, excuse me, Ottawa Frost recently losing Giggity Gow in a trade over to, or over for Unsound. And so, you know, both beautiful, you know, both really good backliners, beautiful game sense when they're running that back line, but maybe it will switch up their game a little bit in terms of how they play. So I'm looking forward to seeing what both of these teams have tonight. 100%. And like I said, you know, both teams have players I know. Chocolate definitely being a good friend of mine uh, since season two. So big shout out to him. And that's going to be a ready up from the side of the tide. So that is going to get us started here. As these teams hop into their positions, that chaotic, take it away. I would be happy to. Here we go. Daytona Tide taking on Ottawa Frost. The disc is in the middle. The stacks are in the tubes. The countdown winding down and away we go into the first quarter. This first touch is going to go to the Tide. It's Arch sending this one forward where it is picked up here by Unsound. Unsound doing some moves, looking for some open lanes, trying to get rid of it. And, uh, and eventually does sending this one through the tunnel up to Chocolate. And Chocolate, we know what he does with those. He will sink in the three. Chocolate not hesitating there to find those three points for the Frost. Getting a quick start here. 15 seconds only to take that goal in. That's going to be a three-point lead here from the Frost. Yep, very quick lead here from the Frost, which is always good to see. But you know that Tide is looking to answer back. It's Jack G sending this one over to Paranim. Paranim now up high cross. Oh, looking for the teammate there, but ends up in the hands of Chocolate instead. Lit now looking to send this one through the mid, bouncing around into the hands of Jack G. Jack G now sending this one back over to Voodoo. Voodoo up high cross, looking for Ryan over there, but it's intercepted instead by Super Buddy, who sends this one all the way down into the zone of the Tide, bouncing out of the bubble before Unsound gets there. It's Unsound now doing some moves on the post looking to take this one in himself and pays for it as Ryan gets a beautiful seal. A good send up to Paranim who's looking for the shot, but it's going to bounce off the shield into the hands of Faster and uh, no Faster going to lose it there, uh, but the shot will not go in. Now picked up by Paranim just outside the bubble under some pressure here from Super Buddy. She'll send this one over across into the hands of Ryan now on the backboard securing the two. 
Yeah, finding those two points, there is the side of the Tide. The Tide there making some passes and a couple rush shots there. We saw that one from Fast, or not Fast Direct, sorry. Uh, we saw that one from, I want to say it was Ryan uh, getting that pick off and then sending it just high and did not find it. But they were able to find the two points nonetheless. Now a one point lead for the Frost. Yep, it is going to be Super Buddy on the wall now, sending this one over to Faster X. Faster looking to send this one back, but oh no, it takes a bad bounce into the hands of uh, Voodoo instead. Voodoo doing some moves, stolen for time, waiting for the teammates to get up there, and then ends up taking the shot himself. My goodness, 40 meters out for the three-pointer. A long three there coming from Voodoo. Beautiful, beautiful shot there, and able to find themselves now with a two-point lead is the Tide. Uh, shout out to the Gunslinger in chat, gifting some subs here to the NEPA TV. Thank you. The support for the channel is always appreciated. But now here comes Ottawa Frost down by two. It's unsound as the QB getting through Jack G before sending it up to Faster X. Faster X over cross now to Super Bunny, who's looking for that low cross, but no good. Bouncing off the wall into the hands of Unsound on the back line. Unsound feeds this one forward to Chocolate. Chocolate up to Super Buddy, and Super Buddy looking for the goal, but no good as that bounces out of the bubble up into the hands of Jack G, but only for a moment. He's forced to just slap it on through the tunnel. The clear is good, though, bouncing into the bubble of the Frost. Chocolate there first, losing a hand on it, but getting back to it. However, Paranim has the reads on the back line. A good interception over to Ryan now back to Voodoo but shut down by the goalie what a save uh, goalie will get this one cleared all the way through where it's picked up by faster faster losing a hand on it instead now into the hands of a super buddy no I'm sorry now back to super buddy and super buddy to unsound and to the goal for the two we are tied up at five apiece yeah, and faster X definitely wanted that long shot there but ends up getting I think the headbutt off of his teammate do find the collection though and the passes there from the frost were just were just beautiful they were just killer yep beautiful beautiful stuff here but now here comes daytona once again it is jack g as the qb walking this one forward up to the men you know the stacks are lurking there he's trying to bait them out before sending this pass on through and it does connect here with voodoo and voodoo puts this one in for the three a quick answer now from the tide and back and forth here, the Tide are, tide are definitely trying to shift momentum in their favor, and uh, yeah, the Frost here just, just not able to uh, get a stop yet for the offense of the Tide. That's going to be a three-point lead now in favor of the Tide. Yep, good work there from the Tide, but now here comes the Frost. It is going to be Chocolate barely getting this pass off before getting stunned out, and Super Buddy looking at this open goal. No, it's going to have to be a pass instead, but hey, if it works, it works. That will be a two here for Faster X. Points are points at the end of the day, Psychotic, and now only down by one is the Frost as they were able to find that collection. Like you said, the shot there was from Super Buddy. Unfortunately, it was just a little low, but Faster X was able to pick it up and gets a slam dunk. Yep, that is what your teammates are there for, and that is why you never watch a shot. You always follow it in, because if it, if it bounces, you want to be there first. So good work there from Fastor. But now, here comes Daytona Tide. Once again, it's Jack G as the QB, sending this one over now to Voodoo. Voodoo, under some pressure, gets the pass back to Jack G. And uh, Faster X just looking to, looking to harass these passes a little bit, but it does seem to be through now up to Voodoo. Voodoo walking this one forward, keeping an eye out for incoming pressure. Chocolate trying to sneak up on him, but no, that pass will get through to Paranim in the mid. Paranim on the floor, doing some moves, waiting for some lanes to open up as she pauses here on the back line, finally feeding forward to Jack G on the boot. Jack looking for one cut up, and oh, Voodoo taking the scenic route around the goal, but does put that one in for the two. Yeah, Voodoo there being a little flashy, but nonetheless gets his two points, and it does pay off for him. You know, we you don't see that often. You know, sometimes most people just like to go for those points. I mean, I definitely do. Uh, but if you have the chance to be flashy, I guess take it. Why not? Unsound now handling that disc and is going to be here rolling out for the frost. Here comes the frost. This pass just a little bit too high, and now it's a race. Ryan there on the back line just flinging this one forward, and it does get through the tunnel, but nobody there just yet. It is unsound there on the back line. I mean, I shouted him out earlier. He is a great back liner in the right place at the right time with a good clear, sending this one up to Super Buddy, and that shot is just going to be a little bit too low. Jack G all over it now, looking to get this one cleared through low mid, taking some bounces around in the midfield into the tunnel, where it will be recovered instead by Faster X. 
faster now looking to get rid of this one firing it high cross looking for super buddy once again who is in the area does get this one picked up hits the incoming cut to faster x and what a pass what a shot another two points here for the frost and the frost here this is something those that's those types of passing plays are something you expect from the number one seed right now in the east division and and they're definitely showing here now closing that gap within one point with a minute and eight seconds to go one minute remaining left here in this first quarter it's jack g picking it up taking it to the ceiling and pausing here you know up by one they can you know technically play this clock meta and jack g is happy to wait all day long making the stack bite before sending it forward up into the hands of paranim paranim under some pressure super buddy will win that one and super sending this one up to chocolate chocolate driving down from the ceiling gets shut down by jack g what a save there jack now Pushing this one forward. Lots of incoming pressure, but still finds a way to get it through the three defenders. Sends it all the way through off the diamond down low into the hands of a Faster X. Faster looking to send it right back where it came from with a pass to Super Buddy and Super Buddy. Oh, off the ding ring once again. How unfortunate. And it will be slapped out of the bubble. 15 seconds remaining. Who's going to be there first? It's Chocolate just getting a slap away where it will be recovered by Jack G with a beautiful slap through the tunnel. Six seconds. They don't have time. Jack G walking this one forward finds the pass up to voodoo who rips the shot but no good off the ding ring and that will do it here for the first quarter and z gunslinger is going to talk to us about it right after a quick commercial break if you really want to find out what you're made of you can forget the personality tests and social media quizzes because the only way you're ever going to know is by heading into the big wild raging so damn beautiful it hurts world and finding out for yourself were you born to follow a path, or were you born free? These are the things we thought about when we made the new Grand Cherokee. Made for what you're made of. We are back here bringing you the second quarter. But before, I want to do some breakdown on that first quarter. Beautiful, beautiful there. I mean, only a, a back and forth game there, really. You know, a one point lead for the Tide here. And, uh, you know, something I've been seeing is is just the is just the patience from the Tide. They have not been rushing those clears, you know, and, and it's definitely been paying off. Uh, when they do get down the field and get it picked up, they're able to get those passes and, and inside the bubble of the Frost as well. The Frost, though, definitely answering back, you know, uh, getting the passes inside of the, in the Tide's bubble, and it's paying off, you know, nine points. 9 to 10, and it's, it's a very close game, and I'm expecting a great second quarter. Stay chaotic. Yep, I am expecting a fantastic second quarter as well. And here we go, getting into it right now. Daytona tied up 10 to 9, but that could change very, very quickly. All right, here we go. First touch going to the Tide, but they're quickly going to lose it to the head of the defender there on the side of the Frost. Uh, who's going to get there first? It is going to be Chocolate sending this one forward all the way down into the zone of Daytona, bouncing into the hands of Faster X, who is happy to say, thank you, give me that, putting that one in for the two. Faster X finding those two points there for the Frost. Again, a quick goal time off that initial. It's a 14-second goal, and we saw 15 seconds of the first round for the Frost as well. So these teams are definitely, definitely playing quick here. Yep. Playing fast, and we're going to see a lot of lead changes, I feel like. But here comes Daytona. Ryan sending this one forward now into the hands of Perrin. I'm under some pressure. She will get away. Now moving toward the trench before looking to send this one high, but oh no, who put Nugget there? That's not fair. Bounces instead into the hands of Ryan, who sends this one across the bubble. Uh, and it will be Perrin picking it up just outside the bubble on top of Pack before sending it over across into the hands of Voodoo. Voodoo now playing careful down on the Pac-Man sends this one low cross, but oh my goodness, what a read there from the defender who sends that one all the way through, bouncing off the backboard, out of the bubble, and into the hands of, who not unsound, Jack G all over it with the stun. Great work there. He'll send this one over now to Voodoo, who relays it forward, looking for Paranim. The pass is just a little bit off, though, and that gives unsound the opportunity to get there first. Unsound now looking to send this one through. It's going to bounce off the back wall, top of the bubble. It's going to be a race. It looks like, yes, Voodoo is there first. First. He's trapped though on the shoulder, sends this one forward up into the hands of Jack G. Jack G now over cross to Ryan. Ryan looking to relay this one forward and finds Paranim in the right place. Paranim on the table, just looking to create some time here while she waits for her teammates to get up there with her. 
No pressure just yet. She'll keep on pushing, doing some moves just outside the bubble before sending a beautiful bounce pass over. Now up high, cross to Voodoo, and Voodoo getting it done with another two points and another lead change. Yeah, back and forth on those lead changes here in this game have just been uh, just been off the charts here. Uh, the passing again from the tide, we're seeing we've been seeing it all game and definitely just still utilizing it. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Am I right? As the tide now have a one point lead here as these teams roll out. Yep, here comes the frost. This one into the hands of Super Buddy. Super Buddy sends it back to Unsound, and then Unsound sends it forward once again. But oh no, that pass is a little bit off. However, Faster X is there for the pickup. Uh, it's going to be picked up now by Jack G. Jack G in the trap sends this one forward, taking a beautiful bounce down into the zone of Ottawa, but the stack is already together and it's Faster X there first. However, a little bit of mishandling going on gives Voodoo the opportunity to steal it away, but he gets stunned out now by Chocolate. Chocolate moving off the ghost, looking for something under some pressure here. Does not pay for the hesitation, manages to get this pass off, but instead it's going to be recovered by Jack G, who under a bunch of pressure sends this one right back to Paranim. Paranim driving in on the bubble, pausing for just a moment, getting caught stranded and not quite able to make that first pass work, but Ryan is in the area to pick it up and put in the two. Ryan, they're able to find that miss pass. That was going to Voodoo on the backboard. Unfortunately, just did not find a connection, but we'll find the connection to Ryan. Ex Expanding uh, the Tides lead now to three. Yep, all the way up to three, but that is not a comfortable lead just yet. And oh no, a little bit of a scuff joust going on. However, Chocolate does get there. He'll send this one forward now through the tunnel, bouncing around into the hands of Ryan. Ryan sends this one over to Voodoo. Voodoo now relaying it forward. Connects with Jack G in the trench, who's looking at an open goal, and he don't miss those. Beautiful work there from the Tide as they go up 17 to 11. 17 to 11 now the tide they're able to get a open long three jack g just in right, right position at the right time and yeah the frost here gotta be one answer back here not in a comfortable position for them but still plenty of time here in the second quarter Yep, plenty of time left. It's uh, Unsound now works this one forward, doing some moves, trying to fake out the defender, and it works as he gets the pass over to Super Buddy. Super Buddy now drifting through the tunnel. Oh no, loses a hand on it, and it looks like it is going to be not Jack G. He loses a hand, and instead it's Chocolate on the scene. Chocolate over to Unsound. Unsound working this one forward, maybe looking for the open lane, and oh, I mean, Goalie came out to pressure him, but turns out he hits those, hits that one for the three. Yeah, and you know, a little bit of a uh, interesting decision there from the goalie to pressure, but nonetheless, you know, I could see the reasoning for it. That's going to be another three points, though, there to bring the Frost back within three points. Yep, back within three and definitely not over yet. This one's going to be Jack G sending this one forward, takes a bounce into the hands of Paranim, who immediately crosses back over to Voodoo. Voodoo sending it right back to her, though, under some pressure here from Chocolate. She'll send this one forward, but on sound with the reads. Beautiful stuff there. Gets the interception and the clear, and it's going to bounce perfectly into the hands of... <gasps> What a steal there from Jack G all over it, getting back to it and getting back to it off the bounces. Not out just yet. It needs another slap and that might do it. No, Paranim on the scene in the midfield relays this one forward. Oh my goodness. So, so close to being on there with a makeshift Kung shot, but not quite going to go in. Chocolate has the grabs on the back line. We'll send this one forward, looking for that pass over to Super Buddy and it does connect. Super Buddy on the nose just sends this one forward, finds Unsound lurking in the mid. Unsound under some pressure here, sends this pass up to Chocolate, who does not get the shot off. Instead, it is Jack G forcing this turnover, getting the pickup, sending it to Ryan. Ryan now relaying it through the tunnel, bouncing off the nose, up high into the hands of Chocolate, who sends that one right back where it came from, bouncing right into the hands of Voodoo. Voodoo now on the floor, walking this one forward, keeping an eye out for the incoming pressure before sending it forward, looking for Jack G, but that's going to bounce into the hands of Unsound instead. Unsound now working it forward, now up to Chocolate. Chocolate, walking, keeping an eye out for the pressure, maybe looking for a high pass to Super Buddy. Yes, indeed, and a beautiful bounce shot right into that top pocket for the two. Beautiful place, but there from Super Buddy to close that gap now within one. The Frost here able to make a little bit of a little bit of a momentum shift here. The Tide, definitely nothing to be worried about, though. Still, still, you know, back and forth like we've been seeing all game from both these teams. It's going to be picked up now by Jack G. Jack G sends this one over across to Paranim in the popcorn area. Immediately under pressure, she'll send it back. 
Jack on the ceiling sends this one forward now up to Ryan. Ryan doing some moves, trying to keep it away from the defense. Oh no, loses the hand on it. It's Jonkala with the pickup, but Ryan with the steal staying on that great persistence sends it through the tunnel, but that's where it will be picked up by Chocolate. Chocolate now relaying this one forward up high. Ooh, not quite the self pass. Instead, it is going to be Ryan there first, slapping this one all the way through. My goodness, no way. Off the ding ring. So, so close. But here comes Jack G. Ooh, the eight meter three into the bottom pocket. What a shot there. That placement was beautiful there from Jack G. Definitely, uh, definitely did not hesitate to capitalize on that goalie being a little out and uh, just a little high. So now extending their point, extending their lead to four points. Yep, up by four and 30 seconds remaining here in the first half. This one's going to be picked off by Ryan, sent over to Jack G. Jack G stalling for a little bit of time here. Defense is back, but now he has more options in the bubble. But oh no, that one will not connect. It's Faster X getting the pickup, sending it to Super. Super relaying it forward up into the hands of Unsound. Open goal, and he don't miss those. Beautiful work here from the side of the Frost to secure the three and cut the lead down to just one uh, as they finish out this quarter. It just won as we're going to be rolling into our halftime here. And we're definitely, I'm definitely excited to talk about these teams and break them down. But first, we have to roll to a commercial break. Ladies and gentlemen, stay with us. We will be right back with the action. Harley Davidson builds bikes that are meant to ride. There are vehicles the parents would recommend you drive. Then there are the motorcycles your crazy uncle who gave you fireworks for your birthday tells you to ride. You wouldn't want to let your uncle down, would you? If your need is speed, chrome, and custom paint, check out all of the new and pre-owned bikes at Greenmount Road Harley-Davidson in O'Fallon, Illinois. Don't let your uncle down. Get to Greenmount. Nepa is going Web3 and will be issuing NFTs as a way to reward the community. Anyone who claims one of these NFTs will be eligible for future raffles and giveaways that we will be conducting throughout the year. They are free to claim exclamation on free and all you have to do is fill out a claim form that can be found at www.nepavrpro.com slash NFT. Ladies, we got some ladies and gentlemen, we got some fun stuff planned for that stuff. I am stuttering over words. Jesus. <laughs> it's okay. all good. But yeah, I mean, I'm sure there is plenty of fun stuff planned for that. So do not miss out. Definitely do not miss out on the remainder of this game. I mean, see, this has been so, so close. 20 to 19. What more can we ask for? I don't think there's anything. I don't think there's anything more we really could ask for. Uh, you know, these teams have just been back and forth. Multiple lead changes tonight. The stacks for both teams, the offense, the defense, it, it's just been it's just been impeccable. Um, nothing really from both teams standing out. Y you know, the defense, like I said, equal in the offense as well. What about you, Psych? Anything you're seeing? I mean, it just uh, the only the only thing I can say is is maybe maybe the execution because both of these teams have the right idea. They're identifying the right options. They're getting together. Uh, they're stacking quickly. It is just a matter of who executes better right now. Um, you know, who is who is missing less shots, missing less passes, uh, and I really think that's what this game is going to come down to. And it has been so close, so neck and neck. Uh, the defense from both of these teams has been has been outstanding. I really cannot say more for for both of these goalies. Unsound has been killing it on the back line with some of those reads. And uh, I, I'm not I don't know if uh, there's a dedicated goalie over there for the side of Daytona, but they've been shutting it down in the bubble. They have been indeed, and and you know Ty just just not letting anything really pass. I mean. You know, we saw them get up by, I want to say, five or six points there in the second quarter. Uh, and, you know, but Frost, we're not, a, not not afraid to, you know, say, hey, we're not out of this just yet. It's only a six point lead. That's two goals, minimum. Three goals at max, you know. So 
these these players have been playing for a long time and know that this game is not over until that buzzer sounds. And this is this is Nepa. You know, this is a four 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 quarter format, eight minute eight, eight minute rounds, and uh, you know. This really comes down to that last last quarter, I think, here, Psych. Uh, this game has been back and forth, and I think it's really going to be who can pull away here in the second half. Yeah, 100%. As Faster X does check in in the chat with us, saying he subbed out for a bit because he slapped his hand on the wall. And uh, that's not good, bud. I hope you are okay there. But you know what? Coming in with a fresh player coming into this quarter, that may be an opportunity here for Daytona Tide. And that is not a dig at Soma. I'm sure they are a fantastic player. It's just, you know, when, you, when you've got a new player coming in on the fly, sometimes your play style has to change a little bit, or maybe they've gone a little cold in the tunnel and they'll take a second to get warmed up. So I don't know how that will affect things, but I'm looking Looking forward to see if it does. Yeah, definitely, definitely can mess with the momentum there. And, you know, something that uh, has happened to my team personally, where we've had to sub out players and it, it just it can really it can really throw off the tide of no pun intended, but the game. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. As a, yeah, I mean, both of these teams, I really, I really cannot say enough. Taking a quick look at the stats, uh, Paranim did drop here during that break, so I cannot see, uh, see her stats right now, but she was killing it on the offense. Uh, but otherwise on the team, Voodoo sitting there at 10 points, Ryan with four and an assist, Jack G six points and two assists. So definitely a lot of passing going on on the side of Daytona Tide. But you know who has more assists than anybody else? My goodness, Super Buddy with five assists so far, and we are only halfway through this game. Yeah, Super Buddy, we've seen him take a couple of long shots tonight and just has not been able to find that mark just yet, but has been able to find the mark with those passes. So nonetheless, still putting on a performance and helping out his team. I say it's just just help out just as much with anything. Yep, 100%. I mean, I've always been a fan of the supportive roles in Echo Arena, the steals, the saves, the assists, and even the uncredited passes that go on in the midfield as teams work it up and down the arena. So shout out to Super Buddy there. Uh, though, you know, I'm sure plenty of those assists were, were unintentionally missed passes, but hey, if it works, it works. And as long as you convert in the end, that is all that matters. All of that said, we are going into the third quarter right here, right now. This first touch will go to the Frost. Beautiful headbutt as that ends up. Ooh, actually, Paranim slaps that one away before they can get into the bubble, where we'll be recovered here by Voodoo. Voodoo sends this one through the far side tunnel. Where are these stacks? We're going to see a race, and it is Ottawa home first. Faster X is in. Uh, I guess Soma is not coming in right now, uh, but it's Jack G getting an interception here, looking to set up the tide for a drive, driving into the bubble, eyeing up that bottom pocket on the goalie. A bold shot, and it will not quite work. However, it is Voodoo getting his pocket picked by Faster X. Oh my goodness, the defense. As Faster sends that one all the way through the tunnel, up high, looking for it once again, and uh, he will pick this one up off the bounce, and working it over across into the hands of Chocolate, who's not quite able to make that shot work. However, it is unsound. Also losing a hand on it kind of getting a reset off no backliner is in the bubble just kidding it's jack g in the area sending this one all the way through off the back wall off the shield into the hands of a super buddy super buddy looking for this clear finds chocolate waiting chocolate sending this one into the bubble but a little too high and into the hands of paranim paranim on the post slowing this one way down drawing out this pressure before looking for that cross pass over to jack g it connects off the bounce and jack will relay it forward to voodoo in the cross side tunnel voodoo looking for the long three but guess what unsound is home a beautiful interception as he's now sends this one up to faster x faster over cross chocolate chocolate Ooh. i mean has to hit that outside of the backboard because the goalie was home and just not quite able to make it work instead it is going to bounce into the hands of ryan in the midfield ryan now working it forward keeping an eye out for incoming pressure but they still get the stun regardless it'll be recovered by faster who sends this one into the bubble flat bounce off the back wall it is uh, ryan first Ryan now sending this one through the close side tunnel. This bounces all the way through off the Pac-Man into the hands of Jack G, but Faster X gets the stun, and that allows Super Buddy to get there first. Super Buddy's pausing at the pack and waits a little too long, gets stunned out. It'll be picked up by Jack G on the ceiling, driving down to the nest and driving forward. Ooh, trying to put a little extra flair on that one and pays for it as that goes off the ding ring and out of the goal. It's now bouncing into their own zone where it is going to be recovered here by Super Buddy. And Super Buddy puts that one in for the three. We've got another lead change. Another lead change in two minute goal time there. That's definitely a bit of difference from what we've seen in these past two quarters. That is going to be uh, now the Frost taking a two point lead. Another lead change here to start this third quarter off. Yep. 
good stuff there. I mean, that was a, a very long goal time there, <laughs> almost three minutes. Uh, but eventually it does go in for the three, and we are off with another volley. And oh no, Paradigm has dropped out of the arena. They're looking to get Archon as quickly as possible. Uh, but as this goes into the hands of Unsound, he will get stunned out. It'll be picked up now from... Oh, just kidding. It is slapped back by the side of the Frost as we race to it on the floor. It looks like yes. No, no. It is Super Buddy there first, getting the stun, getting the steal. A beautiful bounce pass back to Faster X, who looks for the shot, but Voodoo tells him no. Voodoo gets this pick up and sends it through the tunnel, bouncing off the wall into the bubble here. Oh my goodness, there's oh. no way. There's no way. D Z, what was that? That, uh, that was uh, an intentional full court shoulder bounce shot. I, uh, I've never seen that angle before. I mean, I've seen the shoulder bounce. I just never yeah. seen that angle off a wall. Yeah, I've seen the shoulder shot before. I have never seen that coupled with whatever that bounce was off the wall. My goodness, but hey, you know what? If it works, it works, and it does go in for the three. And here they come again as Ryan gets this one picked up in the midfield, sending it to Jack, who's now looking for a cloud shot. Not quite going to work, though, as it goes off the nest and into the hands of Chocolate. Great stun there. Chocolate. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. That is, uh, yeah, it's chocolate with it now. Looking to send this one forward. Bounces off the low tunnel and into the zone here of Daytona. It's a race. Jack G just looking to get rid of it and does, but not quite cleared out just yet. It's on sound with it now, sending it low cross, and it'll be intercepted by Jack G. Man, Jack G has been killing it all over the arena this evening, uh, but that's not going to be cleared either. A super buddy looks to send this one over cross, and it will connect with, uh, no, not a teammate off the bounce. It's Jack G once again. Again, uh, who's looking for this clear, but that's not going to go through either. It's going to require a second pass. Arch helping this one along will get it through, uh, where it will be recovered by Ryan. Quick reset back to Jack G, who immediately distributes up to Voodoo on the wall, driving in one more cut to Ryan, and that will do it. Another two here for Daytona. Yeah, and that beautiful passing there that we've seen all night from the Tide. And you mentioned Jack G earlier. We've been saying his name a lot here tonight in this arena. And, uh, you know, impressive, impressive performance, especially in that back line. So, you know, good, good play there from Jack G. Yeah, and it looks like, you know, Paranim has, has rejoined and left a couple of times. I don't know if it's tech issues or what, uh, but Arch has stepped up to the plate. And as I say that, my goodness, uh, Ottawa Frost all over that one for another three. We are tied here at 25 apiece. This might be the first tied game we have had since i think the first quarter uh yeah so you know both teams here basically back to zero zero i mean the momentum is obviously there but both teams practically back at zero zero as unsound picks it up and picks it off sending it out Yep, sends it out, but not through as Jack G is there for the interception. Jack G in the tunnel under some pressure, sends this one forward, maybe an attempt to dribble, but the stack ends up getting broken apart, and it's Super Buddy there first. Super Buddy looks for the clear, but oh my goodness, what a grab by Ryan. What a pass off to Jack G. Jack G doing some twirls, but gets shut down by Unsound. What a save. And he's going to get, so this is going to get sent up to Faster X, who's looking for a clear, but now Arch's turn to shut it down as he gets this pass up now to Voodoo. Voodoo just outside the bubble, straight down up to Jack G. And there we go. Daytona Tide found the two-pointer. Another two points there for the Tide, and Paranem is back in the arena. Maybe, like you were saying, some tech issues from Paro, but nonetheless, the Tide here are making it happen. No matter what, two-point lead now here with a minute and 40 seconds to go. Yep, a minute, 40 seconds remaining. It's going to be unsound at the nest, sending this one all the way through up into the hands of Faster. A little bit of mishandling there, but he does get back to it off the bounce. Faster now sends this one up to Chocolate, pausing for just a moment before hitting this beautiful bounce reset to Unsound, who immediately sends it back up, I think looking for Faster X, but instead it'll find the hands of Orion. Ryan looks to clear this one through the mid, but it bounces beautifully into the hands of Super Buddy in that cross-side tunnel, who then sends it back through, looking for the bounce pass, but Voodoo on the scene with it instead, doing some moves, trying to get away, but cannot, because Faster X is all over him. Now, passing this one over across to Chocolate. Chocolate to the back line. It's Super Buddy at the Double Diamonds under some pressure. Passes this one over to Unsound. Unsound. Oh! Passes it over to Chocolate, but Jack G with the pocket pick. Uh, not quite going to get out the first 
first time. It's going to require another attempt as uh, Jack G loses a hand on it there after getting stunned out. The reset back to Arch is good. Arch will send this one all the way through the tunnel, all the way off the Geo into the zone here of Frost. If Voodoo's there first, this could be an opportunity as he gets this one. No, not picked up. It's Chocolate there first. He'll hit this reset to Unsound, who then relays it forward up to Super Buddy. Super Buddy looking to send this one through, but oh no, off the trap block instead. It's going to be picked up by Faster X, who sends this one up to Chocolate, and Chocolate will get the two-pointer. My goodness, we are tied at 20 seven again hi game here as this round or quarter three comes to a close here the tide there just just not able to find the connections on the other side the frost though were able to pick it off and get the stop and the points we're going to talk about this game here in just a second but we're going to send you guys to a commercial break Access the largest motorsports inventory in America. We're authorized dealers for Can-Am, Honda, Kawasaki, Yamaha, Sea-Doo, and more. Get the best deals these brands have to offer. Browse through our inventory to find exactly what you're looking for. And we are back here. We have a game here, folks. If you are missing this one, well, I, I feel bad for you because we have a tie game here, 27 to 27 in quarter four. And this is a race to 40 juice for set in the chat, but I don't think 40 is going to play a factor here in this game. Psychotic, what do you think? I mean, you know, I do not know. It has taken three quarters to get to 27. That is not even 10 points around. So if they continue this pace, nobody's getting to 40. Um, so 40 might not mean anything here in this game with how back and forth it has been. Um, and I, you know, momentum is in nobody's favor right now. Both of these teams so neck and neck. I only hope for Daytona Tide's sake um, that they can figure out whatever is going on with Paranim with the, the, the rapid dropping and, and rejoining. Because, uh, you know, the, the quick roster changes tends to, to, you know, it doesn't matter who it is, it tends to slow people down a little bit as they adjust. Uh, but all of that said, here we go into the fourth quarter. It all comes down to this. In eight minutes, we will have a winner. Uh, the first touch is going to go to the Daytona Tide, but it'll be picked up by Super Buddy. Super Buddy sends this one all the way through that far side tunnel where it will be faster. Rex there first, looking to send it into the bubble, but Voodoo tells him no. A good grab there and a good clear through the far side tunnel. Stack race coming through, and yes, indeed, it is Jack G there first. Jack G, a little bit of mishandling there, but does get back to it. He'll take this one up to the ceiling, under some pressure, finds that backboard pass up to Ryan JS, and they will find the two-pointer. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful passing there to break down that defense of the Frost there to put themselves back up by two. Again, you know, we've been seeing these two points all night, you know, a couple threes here, but it's been a lot of it's been a lot of two points tonight, Psychotic. Like chaotic. Yep, I mean, it has been. And then that is because both of these teams are so, so quick with the stacks getting a goalie home. They're not leaving many opportunities open for open threes. And, uh, ooh, a good shutdown there from that defense from Daytona Tide as it is picked up by Paranim. She's back in the arena. She'll send this one over to Voodoo in the far side tunnel. Voodoo now slowing this one way down before sending this one forward up to Ryan on the ceiling. Ryan under some pressure, looking for the goal, but finds the ding ring instead. Toma now trying to hit this quick reset as it is going to be picked up instead by Ryan. He loses a hand on it. It's another race. Jack G in the area will haul it in, firing this cross over to Voodoo on the ceiling. Voodoo now lurking just outside the bubble, waiting for something to open up, drawing out this defense from Unsound before hitting the reset back to Paranim. Paranim on the bow tie, now sends this one over cross. Oh no, the pass just a little bit off as that bounces off the shoulder. Geo, we're going to see a race, and it is going to be Ryan there first in the trap area. Looking to send this one across, but that pass no good either. Uh, but it's okay, he does get back to it. Just a complicated self-pass before sending it over to Voodoo on the ceiling. Voodoo now, walking this one through, looking for Jack G, but he gets shut down by Unsound. Unsound with a great clear through the mid, stack race going on, and what a leech there from Soma. But unfortunately, they are just not quite able to make that three-pointer work. That's okay, though. All the time in the world, they'll get it back to the post, all the way out of the bubble. Oh, no, misses the post, and oh, pays for the hesitation there. No points on that drive. Paranim gets there and gets the reset back to Jack G. Jack G looking to fire this one all the way through the tunnel we should see another snack race going on as that bounces off the boot into the zone here of ottawa it's voodoo there first looking for the three but oh no off the ding ring 
Going to bounce out of the bubble, but not out just yet. Going to require a little bit of help here from Super Buddy, who sends this one all the way down. Stack race once again, but Ryan's there first. Ryan sending this one through the mid up to Voodoo. Voodoo now finds Paranum down low. She's moving in on the bubble. They've got the two on one, and she gets it done with the two-pointer. Yeah, and you saw the frost there. Soma was trying to get that three points, and unfortunately just hesitated too long. Yeah, it might have been safer to take the two points, so at least tie yourselves up here, as now the Tide here has four points in their favor. You know, I, I agree with you. Points points are more valuable there, but the important thing right now for Frost is they do not let that get in their heads because there is still four minutes remaining, and this could still be their game. As here they come for another drive. Just outside the bubble is Super Buddy, but he'll hit this quick reset back to Unsound on the back line. Unsound playing careful here, maybe trying to bait out the defender, but they will not bite. They are up by four. However, that does mean letting Unsound walk forward. He's all the way to the pack. Now the ghost, Paranum lurking, so he'll this, send this one cross over to Super Buddy. Super Buddy now walking up the wall before sending it back over to Unsound, getting to the nest, finds the backboard pass, or at least tries to. No good. Bouncing off the boot into the hands of Chocolate, who catches the whole team in transition to secure the two-pointer. Now, now back within two is the Frost. The Frost here just trying to fight to get those points on the board, and they finally do find them after some scuffle there in the bubble. That's going to be uh, the Tide now trying to roll out and answer back. Trying to answer back, still up by two. It's going to be Jack G as the QB, taking it up to the ceiling. That stack is lurking there on the left side, so he'll walk this one up to mid before finding Voodoo. Voodoo with the pass over cross, looking for Paranim, but finds Jack G instead, so I guess that works, but oh no, not able to get rid of it in time. It's going to be a race. Oh, what a slap there by Ryan, just trying to get rid of it, but Chocolate is all over it. He'll send this one all the way down into the zone here of Daytona, where it will be recovered by Jack G. Jack G looking for the clear through. No. Oh, that is a pass off to Paranem. Excuse me, did not see her hiding there in the tunnel. Who looks to send this one over across, looking for Jack G. Finds Ryan. It's back and forth. Jack G gets another stun. That's going to bounce off that high pyramid there. Another race, and it is Ryan there first, stolen away by Jack G, who just looks to get rid of it and does. Send this one over to Paranem, who now flicks this one high cross, looking for Voodoo. No good, though, as that bounces instead into the hands of Ryan. Now up to Jack G under the boot, driving in. Loses a hand on it for a second, or maybe an ender. Either way, it all works, and he gets the two. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful there. To get that disc back in possession of, of the Tide, they were fighting there for a while. I mean, that scuffle was going on on the right side of the Frost side for so long, and they, you know, Tide were just able to come away with it in the end and get those two points. Yep, gets the two-pointer there, and they are up by four. Here we go into the final two and a half minutes. That is a beautiful cut there and some much needed points here for the side of the Frost, getting themselves back within two. And gentlemen, both teams have broke 30 finally, and this is uh, very uncommon, I, I, I can tell, just from the Gepple games I've watched of Nepa, that seems to typically not break 40 this late. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to be an interesting yep. side. Yep, I don't quite see 40 happening, but oh my goodness, that is exactly what Ottawa Frost needed right there with that three-pointer from Unsound. Unsound coming clutch there in with that three points to put themselves up by one now as their first lead since having this is being in the fir, uh, fourth quarter. Now the tie is going to be trying to answer back to get something going and to put themselves up now. Yep, up by one, but that is not a comfortable lead at all because here comes the tide. A beautiful pass up to Voodoo on the wall, but he gets shut down by Faster X. Faster, looking for this clear, not quite going to go out the first time. It's going to require another try, and this time it is good. Chocolate sending this one all the way through. That would have been huge, but that goes off the ding ring, off the pyramid, behind the pack. Unsound with it for just a moment, but he's got a fight, and he loses it to Paranim. Paranim not quite able to make this pass work just yet. Some stuns going on, and she just sends this one through the mid. We're going to see a stack race, but no, it's Super Buddy there. First picked off by Jack G. Jack G under all of the pressure, not quite able to get rid of it in time. However, that's what your teammates are there for. It's Voodoo now sending this one to Ryan, and Ryan looking to drive it in, but no! Off the ding ring, under one minute remaining. Oh my goodness, what a clear here from Faster X. Points here would be huge, as this bounces into the bubble and out of the bubble before anybody's there. Unsound there, gonna get this one, sending it up to Chocolate. One more cut to Super Buddy, and that is huge, as they now go up by three points, forcing Daytona Tide to look for the three. 
Yeah, Tide here is going to need a three point to even bring it back within, to put it into OT. A two here would basically secure the win for Frost. So the Tide here gonna have to come out and come out here quick as they roll out. Yep, 20 seconds to get it done, and it needs to be a three. This pass is going to go all the way through low mid. Oh, no, off the trench, up high. It's Voodoo in the area with it. Voodoo on the ceiling, maybe has some numbers in the bubble. Somebody harassing the goalie there, and oh, very, very close. They've got to back it out, like, right here, right now. Jack G, no way! It's the three, it's right up at 36! Oh, my God! What was that? Holy cow! Ladies and gentlemen, we have a game! There's no, there's no, there's, there's, there's just no way. Jack G is inhuman. And now it all comes down to this two minute overtime. Next goal will win. This is going to be Daytona tied with the first touch. Voodoo sending this one forward, but the stack is together here for the side of the frost, but not quite able to get it cleared. And oh my goodness, what a shot. Not quite going to go in. Unsound slapping this one out of the bubble back toward the mid where chocolate is waiting. He'll help this one along, sending it into the Daytona zone. The stacks are together. It's Chocolate on the wall, but stunned out here by Jack G. Jack G sends this one forward into the tunnel. That's all the way through. This could be an opportunity if they can get there first. Where are the stacks? A beautiful leech from Jack G. And oh my goodness, oh my Jack God. G slandedly stole this game for Daytona Tide. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why you do not. This is why you tune into every single match. This is. Wow. Oh my god, I'm just I'm just speechless. I, I can't I can't even speak. I can't even speak. Oh my I, god. I have no words. I have no words. I got so loud I was told to be quiet. That was incredible work there from the side of Daytona Tide and Jack G, we've been saying his name all night, securing the three-pointer to send it to OT and then securing the three-pointer to win it. And no, they did not quite reach 40, but they were one point off and Jucifer, that's just gonna have to do. <laughs> <laughs> These teams, I mean, this was this was probably the best game to end off the night. I, I This was a blast to cast. And yeah, Jack G absolutely killing it and uh, I don't know if you voted, but I'm going to go ahead and cast my vote over to Jack G. I mean, listen, e even even without those last two three pointers, Jack G had my vote because he was putting in work on defense and in the midfield, working it up and down the arena. All of that just gravy. Jack G, absolutely player of the game this evening. Uh, yeah, a a beautiful, beautiful, just yeah. Beautiful play from both these teams, and it was a pleasure to cast. So congratulations to the Daytona Tide. The Frost, unfortunately, just going to not be able to go home with DW today, but they are still in their playoff seed. So no worries there from them. Just time to clear your head and get ready for postseason. Yep, absolutely. And I mean, speaking of postseason, what does that do for the standings? Well, unfortunately for the Tide, though they had a beautiful win here tonight, uh, they are still locked into that number four uh, seed to fight for the wild card. However, Ottawa taking that loss there, their number one seed is on the line right now. Um, I think, uh, I think, do not quote me, but I do believe that Baton Rouge Constellations, if they win this next game, will overtake them in the seeding and secure that top seed. Uh, but it is okay. You know what? At the end of the day, they are still in the playoffs, and I'm sure that is, you know, that is all that matters to right, uh, to right now to them uh, in their heads. So great work from both of these teams. Both of them can still rest easy, but oh my goodness, Jack G. <laughs> Yeah, amazing, amazing game tonight from both these teams. And like you said, Jack G, that's all you could say. You can't you can't give that words. You just say Jack G and everybody knows what you're talking about. So again, thank you to everybody who tuned in tonight. We were grateful to be casting right beside uh Psychaotic tonight. First time casting beside her and hopefully more to come. Um Psych, any any last words before we, we depart? Jack G. Jack G. That's all we got for you folks. Again, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you for everybody who tuned in tonight, and it's been a pleasure.
30 seconds. This one is loose in the destroyer zone. Collected by Saluda. Stunned out. Picked up by Game. Stunned out. Zenith with it. Is it? Try to clear it. Clear it out. 20 seconds. Game gets it back here. Game turning it around. Sends this one in off of the floor. Gets it to Rosie Hope. Rosie has uh, Zenith pressuring. 13 seconds. Sending this one in. Stunned out. No. What a shield there from A Court. Oh, oh no! no! Get the finish. That's a victory. That, What's the clock? What's the clock? That's it. That's, that's it. it. In the last second, the Orlando Cyclones come back 33 to 32. Are you kidding me? What? I've got nothing. You know, forget finals. What was that? What was that? No, no not look anymore. At, no. Look at no. That. Put me on camera. Look Put me on that. camera. That was unbelievable. I cannot believe what just happened. I cannot believe what just happened on that read.